if it was the hallucinogen. Well, I'm actually already drinking piss. What is that? It's like a health kick. Like so you're supposed to drink your own piss. What does it taste like? It's salty. I think it's got all like the electrolytes when you're trying to restore. Did it take you a while to get used to it? Yeah, I put it in the fridge to get it cold first. I've heard that it makes it lose some of the nutritional properties if you refrigerate it. I heard it does break down some of the chemicals, but, you know, it's better cold. Welcome back to Macro Dosing. What's up, beautiful people out there? Uh, it is Thursday. It's January 18th, and it is warm outside again in Chicago. It's like 20 degrees. Beautiful day. Loving it. We made it through the worst. Is it 20? Uh, tomorrow, I think it's going to be oh. a high of around 20. We're, as we're taping it right now, I think it's 12 degrees. Uh, I'm checking right now. It wasn't that. It does say 12. Feels like negative four. Yeah, but still, no. it wasn't 12 when I left this morning. Doesn't feel uh, like negative 20. Anymore. This is for the birds. Yeah, it is for the birds. Well, they no, they go south. True. By the way, when we were talking about uh, <laughs> definitely not for the birds. When we were talking about weather last time, I was talking about wind chill and real feel. Boy, shut your ass up. I'm just saying. I didn't real. I I, I forgot. Like when I was going back to look up, like, cause I was like, I swear to God, it was like, but it was the real feel and wind chill stuff. Okay. Forgot All right. So that. technically you were right. No, I was still wrong. <laughs> still wrong. Uh, Billy, I, I like your hat. Thanks for wearing that today. I didn't know that yeah. you're a big Biden supporter. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not endorsing Billy Joe Litter. Biden at all, but it's, it, it's good to see you take a side one way or the other. Yeah. We even make a stance, Billy. Yeah. This what is like a do? Boogaloo Boys hat. Boogaloo Boy, who's Boogaloo Boy? They're the, they're the ones that like want a civil war to break out, so they like would vote for Biden. Yeah, they're the ones that show up to rallies wearing like Hawaiian shirts, tactical yeah. vests, and they're just they're agents of chaos. They just one want... of them got shot because he stuck an AK forty. He they like want protests to turn violent. Crazy shit. What's yeah. their uh what's their own what's their mission statement? What's their... They they want anarchy. They want they want, the, they the... want race wars, they want riots, they want everything. All right. Sound like a bunch of fun guys. Yeah. Very, very online people. They Not very lot, well adjusted. They spend a lot of time in forums. Oh, they Nazis. Yeah, they're they're pretty hardcore right wing. I was looking at the Wikipedia. Uh... They're, well they're I don't know, they're, they're kinda like nihilists in a way. They some are white supremacists or neo-Nazi groups who believe that impending unrest will be a race war. But there's also groups that condemn racism. So they just they have they're like the internet anonymous, but like in human form. Hashtag not all boogaloo boys. <laughs> they'll like they'll they like would go to like leftist protests and like try to make them push them like for leftist causes more extreme. Yeah, they're they're big time potsters. They just want anything that leads to chaos, and then they're for that. So, so voting for Joe Biden they're, they're just, is just... one of those things. Wait, so they're voting for Joe Biden as a prank? Yeah, because they they like wanted to like die in office and something bad to happen. Okay, that's a, they, yeah, very strange, very strange yeah. people. I don't know if they've thought that one through. Yeah, they way. haven't. There's no way they have. <laughs> they have, dude. Okay, their they, goal is to put Biden in president who in office who they don't want to be president so that he can die in office. No, so he, it can like if, if Biden, up? yeah, if Biden, yeah, like they want discord and craziness. They want content. Yeah, and then they want to so use that like content it. to start a race war. Yep. Okay. What is this? This is, this is not all of them are racist though. I don't know. Yeah. This sounds like a. This is hard to. Pin Some down. of them are communists. It's it's like it's a weird thing. It's just like a group of dudes who just want the world to burn because they think that chaos is a ladder and they'll. So. Vote Joe they, Biden. They've been black pilled. I hey, please isolate that clip from Billy where he just said vote Joe Biden. <laughs> vote yeah. Joe we're, Biden. We're just gonna On use loop. that one. On a loop. Um, Billy, uh, we're gonna play a fun game. It's almost like a. You remember that that bar game where you could. Uh, like do the picture hunt and find different things like, okay, find the, the differences between this picture and that picture, mm -hmm. or, you know, find what's wrong with this picture in the background. Um, how many C4 cans are in the background of Billy's uh, frame right now? Oh, I see wow. three. I, I, I've gone pretty hard this morning. 
I mean, the thing is these C4 Ultimate Energy Freedom Ices are amazing because they taste like those rocket pops from yeah. uh, like the, the ice cream truck. And I just like feel like I'm in the gym, but I feel like I'm eating a rocket pop pop and then getting like a sugar high and running around the playground and it just gets you amped. I so went you've, insane you've had three today. Of them? You've had three C4s today? Uh, no, one's a reflection in the mirror. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> All right. That makes I've sense. I've had two C4s today. So if I'm a little like edgy, uh, like pumped up, like I'm just super amped right now. And, you know, best best way to prepare for a podcast is to rip one C4, work out, and then rip another C4, and then just show up to the podcast amped as fuck. And everyone's like, whoa, dude. Also but, for context, it's 11 a.m. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's 12 in in, in my true. area. In real time. So, yeah. yeah. In um, Eastern time. Hand up! I'm a, I'm a dummy because I I never put two and two together and realized that that's a mirror behind Billy. I thought that he had two axes <laughs> hanging on the wall this whole time. Were <laughs> also I don't think we ever discussed your new decor in that little ape structure or monkey structure. Oh oh yes, this is a, a this is a um, what you would call it? It's a something you bring back from vacation, a souvenir from Uganda. Mm. It's a silverback gorilla with his wife and child and their wife. happy family <laughs> okay one of his oh. wives yeah I've, oh. i i went to uh i went to the lincoln park zoo a few months ago mm. and uh stopped in the gorilla house for a while just stared at the gorillas and their family and it was it was so entertaining watching there could be a reality show about these gorillas because you got the you got the silverback the male and then he's got two wives in there with him and then he's got like six little shithead children that are running around just annoying the crap out of him uh, like stealing blankets from each other, playing chase, and it was cute. It was funny, and then one of his, uh, one of the, one of the females walked by, and the male gorilla just looked at her and just slapped her across the face, and then she ran away. And everybody that was watching was like, "What the fuck? Like, call the cops! Like, that's <laughs> domestic abuse we're just watching right now." Uh, Animal Kingdom's wild, dude. When we saw him in the wild in uh, the video with Donnie's coming out soon, stay tuned. Uh, it will be posted everywhere. Um, but just seeing them chilling in the forest, like you just saw a super content silverback munching on vegetation for hours, his family all around him. And I was like, you know what, man? Like this guy has it made. He's in a protected park. No one, you know, can bother him. He has to deal with a couple people walking by sometimes. But he's just chilling and he you could tell he was happy. I almost like he like I, I accidentally looked him straight in the eyes and he mm -hmm. was like through his eyes. I could just tell he was like, you're stupid for leaving the jungle. Like you should like you're in this modern world with all these problems. Like I'm sitting here in the mountains, you know, gorillas in the mist. It's beautiful. And, you know, just munching on food all day. And I get to have sex with multiple other gorilla S's. And I was like, guys got it made. Does. Shout out, Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, I, I got a few things, Billy. Thanks for s sending the sheet over this morning. Uh, I made some additions to the sheet of topics we want to get to. In today's episode, it should be an interesting one. We're going to talk about the dead internet theory, which is something I admit I hadn't heard about until a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I started looking into it. They make some interesting points. I'm not saying I believe in the entire thing, but I... I think that there's something to a lot of it uh so i don't know if you guys have heard about that before today's episode but it should be interesting uh but before we get into that we've got billy's sheet i want to run through um the additions that i made they're both about big t um i just found this out before we recorded so me and big t got into the studio ahead of time and uh, i was showing him the amp that i brought in i'm getting my like music station set up in the studio and I asked him to name any song because this new amp that I have can like replicate any tone. And uh, he doesn't know a lot of songs. No, so you said name a guitarist. Na name a guitarist. B Big T doesn't I, know. I know. I know the best songs. I know songs. <laughs> <laughs> so I I said, well, there's this tone here for Tuesday's Gone by Leonard Skinner. He's like, I don't know that one. I said it's uh it's the song that they play at the beginning and throughout Happy Gilmore. And Big T said that he had never seen Happy Gilmore. Which I think is absolutely shocking. I thought everybody has seen Happy Gilmore. Never seen it. <gasps> really? You look that like a crazy. Happy Gilmore watcher. We could watch it when everyone comes to town. Um, I haven't seen it because I don't want to see it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. And this it's is not like I've been shocking. dying to do it and I just haven't. 
Big T might be too young for Happy Gilmore. No, because, but it's like what? a classic where everybody. I, mean, I know Mad Dog and McKenzie have seen it. Yeah, I didn't when see it when I was like it. twelve. I didn't see it till later in life, as well. I'm but, older than you. I know, <laughs> but like you haven't seen it. Like when did it? How old were you when it came out? I have no idea. Maybe not born. It, I think it came out. 96. I want to say no, yeah. So not yeah. born. I wasn't born either. Like, Damn. but but you just said too young, and then you said I didn't see it till I was later in life, and I'm older than you. Yeah, so, I know. We're how much older? Like, dude, it's two years. Like, let's not. It's not weird. But like, Billy, you're you're saying. <laughs> I don't think you know what you you're saying. It. You're older than me, but you still may be too young to watch Happy Gilmore. I didn't watch it because it wasn't like current when I was allowed to watch movies like that. Mm, bad oh, take. I, I, just, I don't I, even understand what you're saying. I feel like, like Happy Gilmore like though is PG, a movie that isn't it? What the everybody's watched. No, it's PG-13, I think. But it's isn't like it a, a little classic. raunchy. Yeah, it's a little raunchy. But it's like a yeah. classic movie. I know, but like it is PG-13. Okay, okay. Who introduced you to Happy Gilmore? Like I remember watching Longest Yard. Like Happy Gilmore, you know, like. For example, my parents showed me Caddyshack because that was their golf funny movie. I've never seen Caddyshack. Caddyshack's funny. Yeah, it's very funny. You'd like Caddyshack, Aaron. Happy Gilmore also isn't like one of those movies where it's like, son, you're finally old enough. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. showing you Happy Gilmore. Yeah, like, you kind yeah. of just like watch it on your own yeah. when you get older. It's like all of those old Adam Sandler, like Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, like all of those are like just movies you Big Daddy, like those are just the classic Adam Sandler's. Yeah, I, I was shocked that he hasn't seen Happy Gilmore. It's so funny. I haven't seen it. Have you seen Billy Madison? Unfortunately, yeah, didn't didn't like it. What? Didn't care for it. Here are the, okay, so here are the Adam Sandler movies I like: Mr. Deeds, Longest Yard, Click. <laughs> hey, why Click is that is a funny? Fucking Click. Here. Jerker, bro. It's that's a great almost, movie. Like, almost got me at the end when I first saw it. I was like, Man. um, did not like Billy Madison. Hate Waterboy. That's crazy. Um, Fifty first dates. If, if I were yeah. to say first like dates. one movie that I guarantee you that Big T likes, it would be Waterboy. It's it's too dumb. Is, is like it Fifty First Dates? Never seen it. It's not an accurate representation of SEC football. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Water dogs. You don't like the water dogs, bro. Um, I'm trying. Have I seen any others? Wedding oh, singer. Uh, have not seen that. Grown ups, I like. But Big, that's different. Yard. Big Daddy. Never seen it. Big Daddy is Big so Daddy's good. Well, uh, Fifty Top First tier. Dates. I have not seen that. Top tier rom com. Is yeah. is um is Big Daddy similar to Billy Madison and or uh the Water Boy? I think it's more similar to Mr. Deeds. Yeah. Okay. It's also a heartfelt movie. Yeah. It's like a good like a good. It's story. a feel good. Yeah. Good story. And it's also so funny. Yeah, I, I think that you would like you would like Big Daddy. You might not like Happy Gilmore if you didn't like Billy Madison. Yeah. It's the okay. same level. It's like a very silly movie. It kind of plays a, a similar character. But big but Big Daddy is actually like a I think it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. What's wait, which Adam Sandler movie is the one with uh Dylan and Cole Sprouse? Big Daddy, that one. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just that's very surprising to me because I, I figure everybody's seen Happy Gilmore. Not all whites. Not all whites. <laughs> uh, no. The other thing that I found I out know. about Big T today is he always has a pen. Successful people always have a pen. I like that. Who taught you that? I honestly don't remember. But you keep one with you because you just know that's... You needed a pen today. I needed a pen today. Successful people always have a pen. I like that. I like so is that like... Uh, you're just playing the probabilities? Like, if I carry a pen, odds are I'll be successful. No, it's just it's it's a uh, it's a thing you do that it it's it's just about preparedness. Well, and also so like, flexing you, on people you're better than them. That's no. a, that's a stretch. But so like you you consciously wake up every day like I have to have a pen. Well, I just always keep them in my backpack. I think there's a Impressive. I think there's two circles not touching people who carry pens and people who seen Billy Madison. Yeah. Um, I, I know what you're saying though, Big T. It's good to have, you'd rather have a pen and not need it than need Correct. a pen and not have it. Mm -hmm. Cause then if you don't have a pen, you're doing that thing where you're patting your pockets and then yep. no one looks cool when they pat their pockets. Ooh, 
you know, smokers kind of look. They'd be like, man, my shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Or kinda like the look. ref That's... looking for the challenge flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... That's always my favorite. Oh, there was one when um, Jeff Fisher, he was trying to find his challenge flag, Coach Jeff Fisher, and he couldn't find it because he wanted to challenge the play. And he just, that, it was a bad look. It was a bad look for, <laughs> for the cameras. Uh, Aaron, did you watch any football this weekend? Uh, I saw the Texans game. Um, it was like in and out, but I saw I saw most of it. And who else played? Uh, the Rams played the Lions. I didn't see that one. Uh, the oh, Eagles played the Bucks. Missed that one. The Bill Bills played the Steelers. Cowboys played one. the Packers. Damn, I missed all of them. Damn, I, I caught the Texans game. Yeah, I, I saw your tweet saying that there are a lot of people out there, you know, that want Arian to come back to the organization, um, be visible at games, what carry the flag out onto the field, get people pumped up, and you said that you'd do it, right? Yeah, that was me. I was a little faded when I said fuck with I, me. I know, um, I know. I could, I could always tell a faded tweet <laughs> from you in gonna, particular. Yeah, definitely not going to run out and carry no flag. What flag? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, like I always have like – mentions like people are always having like conversations like where is it? where is Aaron? you know what I'm saying? because i was a prominent figure in the in the organization and so um yeah i think there just hasn't been much effort on either side to uh like be around a program like that and like i don't know in what capacity i would even do it like i know i know my boy dre he's like he like works there like and i asked him what time because I, I did go back to one game and i asked him, like what do you do here he was like i'm dre i said okay and uh, that's just what he is. The title is himself. And he just kind of <laughs> walks around, gives everybody high fives and just enjoys his life there. Um, but yeah, I don't know what kind of capacity I would even, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no role for me. So it's like, and I'm not that like, like football is not that, it's not a fixture in my life anymore. And I think that's kind of hard for people to understand. Like, I understand the perspective from football fans. They like probably think I'm, I think I'm too good or something. Yeah, you know, I get that. Like, train of thought but it's just not the case where it's just like i don't know, I have just a bunch of different interests i just do other shit and football was, was like a season you know no pun intended so if the if the texans make the afc championship game um if they if they manage to beat the ravens this upcoming weekend which is gonna be tough right um it would be awesome if you did a live stream if you came up and watched the texans in the afc championship championship game with us and if you wore the letterman jacket I lost it in the flood, dog. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That yeah, sucks. I lost a bunch of my shit in the in Hurricane Harvey, so I don't even have it. Um, damn. Yeah, I lost that shit. But I, I, I'll, I'll shoot up if they make it. Yeah, be in the live stream with us. Represent the Texans. I mean, I, I don't think I'm like I'm not a good representative. I've never have been. Like, that's always been the knock on me. It's like I don't like carry the torch of everywhere I've been. Like it's, it's I I go where I go and then I move on. That's kind of like my stick. Yeah, but it'd be it'd be nice. I think a lot of people out there in Houston would like to see you at least like you know support the new team. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I say. I don't have like I'm, I'm wishing him because like my boy, Jamico's my boy. You know, I, I bled with him, I sweat with him. Like that's my dog. Like you know, like anytime you create that kind of bond with somebody, like forever. I, I hope all these cats are successful. Like I saw one of my boys. I don't know if you saw this, but like there's a commercial with my man Connor Barwin. He was on um what commercial was it? it was some like charity or something like that, right? On on one of the games I was watching, or on the Houston game I was watching. And I hit him up. And Connor Barn was just one of my favorite humans that I've ever came across in the NFL. Um he's just, just one of the greatest guys ever. So like I hadn't talked to him for years. Like I'm talking years. And I just sent him a text and he was just like all happy to hear from me. And it was like a mutual thing. So like anytime I play with somebody, man, I'm rooting for him to death. Like, so I hope Miko win the whole shit. That would be dope. What was Miko like as a player? Could you tell he was going to be a coach? Yeah, so certain guys got that coach vibe to him where um, he'll joke. Like, he didn't, I don't remember him cursing too much either. Like, he was just very – he was always – he was one of them cats. Like, so he was never, like – a lot of people, like, powwow against – management right so we'll have talks like man they fucking this up they fucking this up i don't ever remember him partaking in any of those conversations um and so uh maybe he did you know so i don't know but like from my from my perspective i don't i don't remember that but he was always very i think aside from all that i think he was just uh he was just a leader's leader right so like guys followed him like you listened to what he said because he didn't talk a lot but when he listened i mean when he talked to you if you listened 
Um, he was always very like business like. Um, he was one of the cats I kind of modeled after when I first got to the league of like how to be a pro because there's a difference between playing football at a high level and being a professional. And him, Andre Johnson, those are the guys I looked up to as far as like how to be a pro, how to go about my day to day uh, business uh, and be a professional. So um, it, it was the definitely he was the difference between him and like everybody else. He was a really smart football player too. Mm -hmm. They called him Cap. Like that was his name was Cap. Like he was just the captain of the team. That's a great nickname to get. Yeah. If you're like that, if everybody knows that you're that much of a leader, they just base that's your name now. Cap. Yeah, everybody called him Cap. Another one of your teammates just became an NFL head coach too. That that's right, Gerard Mayo. Shout out to shout out to Mayo, man. That's my dude. Um, yeah, the group chat was going crazy. Uh, was I telling him we're gonna pull up and embarrass him? Um, it, it's really that's actually really dope seeing him seeing his progression because he was like he's another one of them cats like who just did the right thing all the time, straightforward. Like, um, yeah. Good dude, happy for him. That's my brother, man. I hope I wish him success, man. So I, I told him if he needed a running back coach, I'll holler at me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. I would love to see you up in New England. That'd be great. Uh, it's just too much. I can't be a coach, man. That shit is. That will never go home. Running back consultant, Arian Foster. I think I'll, that'd be cool. I come in. I come in and teach him about the zone for sure. I, I'm watching Hard Knocks right now, and I have like because there's a t like oh god, what's the Dolphins coach that was playing? Um. Mike oh, McDaniel. No, no. Oh God, Who he was on played? the. Oh, Wes Welker. Wes Welker. Yeah, Wes Welker. Like, I'm like, Arian could do that. Like, because what's what? Wes Welker, the wide receivers coach yeah. or something. I'm like, Arian could do that. Like, and you guys I mean, are like easily. similar age, I think. I'm mean, easily, and I, and also I'm a, I'm like I'm a really good teacher, like, because I one I understand what I'm talking about, but two I know from a different perspective. So my my favorite running back coach of all time in the league, college, high school, anyway, was a guy by the name of Jay Graham. Jay Graham played in the league maybe a couple of years, two or three years. Um, but he was a running back at the University of Tennessee. And he was by far my best running back coach. And it's because he played. So whereas like the majority of running back coach and position coaches in general, that's just their that's just their stepping stone because they eventually want to be a coordinator and they eventually want to be a head coach, right? So if you're doing a position coach or special teams, you, you kind of know what unless you play the position, you know what you what the the coordinator wants from you or the head coach wants from you. And that's how you coach it. But there's a difference between knowing and understanding the nuances of that position. So when you're getting coached by somebody who used to play a position or used to play in general, they coach it differently. They coach it with, it's more of a feel. So it's like, you should have made this read here. This is what has to go down. It's like, I, I understand how you did this, but check this out. You know, it's it's very, there's a lot more leeway and a lot more understanding. But really great players sometimes don't make the best coaches because some of them, like, can you imagine if Bo Jackson was a running back coach? Be like, just run the guy over and be faster than that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an ego thing. It's like with Jordan, right? I think it's an ego thing, right? Y like, you have to separate yourself from who you're trying to teach. Like, and I think that yeah, my kids taught me that. So it's like, I can't, I'm not, I don't view the world in the way that they do. So they're not going to view this thing that I'm trying to teach them in the way that I do. And so I have to put myself in their shoes and bring them up to where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's but it's an ego thing. You have to drop your ego and like feed it to them slow like, you know, slowly. And I think with Jordan's just like how are you not up at 4 a.m. hitting a thousand shots like you fucking bum? Like that's that's they, his mentality is that like just do it. Like but like you have to like drop your ego and say, "Listen, bro, like this is this is how I got here." Because there was a process as to how you became a killer. But that process is that's the only process that you came through. So you got to drop your ego and not everybody like you, though. Yeah, who would you say are the best, like, combo players slash head coaches? Like, when you take into account what they accomplished on the field or the court and then also had, like, an enormous amount of success as a head coach. Steve Kerr. Steve oh, Kerr. wow. Yeah. I think he's number, well, Dion. Dion. Uh, I'm going to wait on Dion. He's absolutely... Yeah, he's got, we got to wait till the end of well, this. No, no, he's coaching. up there because he, didn't he win a championship? In, was it a SWAC or what is it? What is it? Where was he? Yeah. They were yeah, really they, good at Jackson, Jackson State. State. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So he won yeah. something. I, I, I don't, I don't know how good of a coach he is. I really haven't dissected his coaching style like that, but I do know he's a good like leader. Like yeah. he knows how to galvanize one attention, but two like young men.
and he, and he he gets them young men to believe in him, and that's 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 something to say. Now, a lot of that is his, not to take anything away from him, but a lot of that is his prowess for being probably the best corner the NFL has ever seen, right? Or the, this game in general has ever seen. So, I mean, that doesn't hurt, and I think that's that's definitely a factor. Um, I, has there been an absolute baller that has translated to being like a top tier coach? How good was Phil Jackson? As a player, as a player, yeah. I mean, he wasn't an All Star, was he? Was he playing plumbers though? Well, he was playing against who he was playing against at the time. You can't throw out like you can't throw out any player from the sixties and seventies. Um, I didn't realize. I just looked this up. Larry Bird was a good coach. Oh, really? For the so Pacers, only, that's right. So he only coached three years. First year they go fifty-eight and twenty-four. Second year thirty-three and seventeen. Was that a shortened season or something? Or maybe he didn't coach yet. I don't know. And then third year, uh, 56 and 26, they won the East. And Why he was stop? He was coach of the year his first year. Why do you only – yeah. I, d I didn't know he was a good coach. He switched in the front office. I forgot about okay. that, yeah. man. I forgot about that. Um, see, Phil Jackson. Wayne Gretzky was not a good coach. No, he wasn't. <laughs> what he about was very bad. Mike Ditka? Yeah, yeah, Dick, true, yeah, Dick could be up there. Won a Super Bowl. That's was true. one of the best players to ever play the position. Matter of fact, he might be in the conversation of the goat. Yeah, uh, player coach. Okay, yeah, as so a well as a player, his, Phil Jackson was two time champion, NBA All Rookie first team. Yeah, that's that's basically his his height as that's okay as a player. So. As a player, Ditka won a Super Bowl. He won an NFL championship, which I don't know. How... Yeah, he won. Yeah, so it's... it's a difference. No, the NFL championship was different than the AFL championship versus a Super Bowl, which is NFL and AFL. Is before the merger. Yeah. Mike um, Ditka played before the merger? Yeah. What the fuck? My memory does not serve me. Wow. Let me let me look up the exacts on that. But uh, he is a Hall of Famer. Five-time Pro Bowler and two-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah, is he in the Hall of Fame as a player or a coach? I don't think they differentiate. They don't I think, differentiate. Yeah, I think they just say you you was a baller. He was a college in the College Football Hall of Fame. Actually, Dick probably got in as a player before he got in before he did any of the coaching stuff. Yeah, let me see. I'm trying when... to think of where Mike Dick went to college, and I don't know. I think he went to Pittsburgh. Wait, let me check. College career. He played for Pitt. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we have a, a new employee here at Barstool who we should actually probably have him on Mac. We should. Liam? Point. Yeah. I want to I wanna know more about him. Ultimate ball knower. The best <laughs> oh. ball knower. You can, you can name any player for the most part in the NFL right now. And within about two seconds, he'll tell you where they went to school. And then he'll follow it up with two fun facts about that player <laughs> as he continues to think about it. It's and wild. Do you know he know he knows every single sport? He we were watching the World Junior Hockey Championships, yeah. and he goes, um, "I really like Leckermaki on Sweden to score today," and he did. <laughs> and I was like, "How do you know who this is?" Yeah, yeah. He you might know him as No Context CFB, yeah. No Context College Football. Yeah. So oh. that's his that's his account, um, and he's got a great eye for just watching weird things in college sports doing like a screenshot of it and uh they're all very very funny but he is like a fucking genius when it comes to sports and just sports knowledge and he's a very interesting unique guy so i, I feel like we, we should get him on macrodosing at some point I, I, want, I want to know like how his brain works hmm. and where he comes from he knows a ton about tennis every single sport yeah and you know what his dad did oh yeah i, I do what his dad was a writer on boy meets world yeah no what? way yeah. yeah his dad followed me on twitter and i was like what the hell why is a boy meets world writer following me on twitter and i love boy meets world so i was like kind of jazzed and then i saw his last name and i was like wait a minute and then like 20 minutes later liam followed me on twitter and i was like oh this all just went together in my head at one time but yeah he's from la yeah we gotta we gotta talk to him more yeah. Uh, going through Anger. Billy's sheet here, we've got some some things to get to. Uh, first and foremost, this happened on Monday after after we taped. Um, Donald Trump has won the Iowa caucus. So it was a close call. It was, uh, <laughs> it was him, I actually Ron, 
Nikki. Nikki, her spin zone after she came in third place was great. Where she said it's a two, it's a two person race right now, and she came in third. <laughs> uh, she did win. I believe she won one county. Right. I haven't checked the updated results. Yeah, of it, she but won one county as of Monday night. Um, she won one of the ninety nine counties in Iowa. Trump won the other ninety eight, and she won that one county by one vote. So I guess that's why she's saying that she came in second place. Do you want to know something crazy about that county? I do want to know something crazy about that county. It's where I pip- picked up my dog. That's oh, crazy wow. about yeah. that county. <laughs> yeah. Whitey's origin story. Yeah. yeah. he's a, I didn't know he, he's a Vivek guy, but apparently he is. <laughs> well, Vivek, uh, Trump, he, Not he Vivek, dropped out. Uh, yeah. uh, Haley. He dropped out. Great right. American putting party and country above his own political ambitions. Yeah, because you know he could have gone <laughs> all the man. way. He could have gone all the way, Big T. We were just getting started. What did I tell you about Vivek? He, Howard. He's, he's so weird and unlikable that he was never going to be I a disagree. threat. I disagree. His, his only redeeming quality is that he is openly antagonistic against people that you don't like. I do like that about him. Yeah, that's his big selling point. Um, yeah, we'll see. I hey, explain his quote to me when he was telling that old lady when he said when he said a vote for me is a vote for Trump. <laughs> you, you see that shit? Uh-uh. You see well, that? He was, no. He was the, there was this lady who was like on the fence. She said, I like you. And he was like, if he said, I like you, but you know, I think Trump is the, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, Listen, they got it out for Trump. And so if you care about Trump, you'll vote for me. <laughs> and it made none of it made any sense. I, I get what he's going for. He's saying he will be a continuation of Trump's policies and stuff because he's been very who, effusive who, in his praise of Trump. But who, who better than Trump's policies than Trump? That don't make no fucking well, sense. Well, I, I guess he's saying they're going after this guy. He's got indictments, whatever. I don't have any of that, but you can count on me to govern in the same way. It's, I'm going to find that clip. Watch it. It's fucking comedy. It's pretty funny that a guy, what did he come in, fifth place? No, he was fourth. Oh, fourth place. Sorry. My, right. Out, and my listen, mistake, Big T. Uh, well, I, I was thinking third, but then I forgot about Nikki Haley. Uh, he went from zero name recognition whatsoever to being a semi viable candidate in the Republican primaries, which is impressive. Well, it, it's very funny because it, it shows you that Trump is going to win this thing easily. Hands, yeah, but hands we knew down. that. But, I, but the reason it, it's so funny because Vivek was able to go from zero to fourth place in the Republican nomination for president just by saying, I really like the guy that's going to win the nomination for president. <laughs> that's how that's how popular Trump is right now with Republicans, that you can make a brand as a politician just sucking a different politician's dick. I think his brand was more than that, but I, sure. I think that's pretty much what it was. I don't think Trump won handedly enough in Iowa. Uh, it's won by it, 30 points. I think it's a I record think he win. He should have won by more. If like if going into the wider, the BCS nation, computers are going to ding him for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think he won by enough. Like he should have mopped up Iowa even he more did. than he did. No, even more. What would you have liked his percentage to be? I think I think uh, DeSantis won way too much. I think DeSantis like his margin of winning was more like. Trump, sh- like DeSantis shouldn't have gotten even half of what he got if we really want to look at it. Because if you look at the demographics of Iowa, they're it's, completely skewed. He should have won almost six. How much did he get? Like 52. It, he should be winning 64% as it, of Iowa. As it reminded me, Brett, of Trump. He was doing like, I think it was a town hall. And uh, some lady said, um, I like you, but what I don't like about you and what I like about Ron DeSantis is that, you know, he doesn't demean people. You're always demeaning people. Like, you're mean, you're abrasive, and yada, 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 she goes on. And then he goes, I can't, I can't Ron DeSantis everything he is. I, I, <laughs> if it wasn't for me, he'd be working at a pizza shop. <laughs> so she <laughs> tells him how she don't like him because he demeans people. And then he just does the same shit. That nigga funny, man. What a funny He's guy. Hysterical. So <laughs> it's fucking comedy. So, Billy, just to back up, Trump won 98 of the 99 counties. And you right. don't think that he won enough. I don't. I mean, you're not, you're not sick of winning yet. <laughs> If he's going to know, good. He, he keeps him like, hungry. for example, like the the demographics he won in Iowa translated to other states because Iowa is vanilla as fuck. It is, you know, 
which is vanilla. Even your dog if, is white. Also, caucus turnout in general in Iowa, it's it's not like a huge sample size. Right. But when it translates, like we when when do we see Florida? When's when do we find out about Florida? Is that like, Super, Tuesday? Super Tuesday? Super Tuesday. A uh, mop of Florida too. Yeah, Ron no, is, but, Ron's gonna lose his home state, and it's gonna be hilarious. You think? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Thousand percent. He because didn't... because everybody that's running for this nomination, besides Nikki, to a certain extent, isn't running the same way that Ron's running. But like everybody else, is running to say like we agree with President Trump. Like they're they're diet Trumps, and why would you ever drink a diet Trump when you have the real Trump right there? The diet's never gonna win. You can try. DeSantis is mod. Uh, he's manipulated his entire public image, his way of speaking, his body language, to mimic Donald Trump. To to take. Oh, I don't agree qualities. with that at all. His body. La- he's he's a robot. But he's he's a robot that's trying to be Donald Trump. <laughs> if that's the case, he's doing it very very poorly. Correct. Uh, okay. Those yes. heels. Yes. He Those Cuban heels. If you watch his mannerism with his hands, he's he's making a conscious effort to try to. Um, make the same like subliminal mental impressions of strength in people's brains. I could I think he put it. on weight for the honest, role. Victor. Huh? I think you used to you used to fuck with DeSantis. Well, so he was like, I think he governs very effectively, and he is horrible at running a campaign and like being normal. Like, yeah, if, he, like he's very awkward, dog. Like, yeah, he just he he was supposed to be next up, and he's completely squandered it. Like. He just can't be normal. Yeah, Vivek. He's a weirdo. Your heart. Yeah. So last time, or at least in twenty in twenty sixteen, when they had the uh, the nomination process, Republicans ran against Donald Trump. They tried to one up him in debates. They attacked him, and this time, everybody is running in fear of Donald Trump because they're afraid of his voting base and they're afraid of what he'll say about them. And it, you're never going to be able to to win a campaign doing that. It's not possible. And he's try he's tried to like be diet. Try, his brand is like I will do many of the same things that Donald Trump's doing, but I'm a little bit more palatable and I'm less rough around the edges than Trump is. And people like Trump because he is rough around the edges. So you're never going to beat him at his own game that way. And so he's going to get embarrassed in his home state of Florida. Trump I think it'll be relatively him. close in Florida. If I was Ron, I'd drop out before Florida. Yeah, just to save a yeah, little bit of face. Almost like suicide if you try to run again. By the way, when I'm talking about Trump needing to win by more, that, that's saying he needs to win by more in order to have like hope in the general election. That's what I'm talking about. Like anyone who voted for Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley will vote for him. You think I'm, I'm not, inti- I'm not I, entirely I think lo- sure of that. I think a lot of Nikki Haley voters are going to vote third party. I see them being RFK people. I, I don't know if RFK, but is they're- he still there? Oh yeah, uh, they're the, they're the same people that um like voted libertarian that didn't want to vote for Trump that said like I'm a lifelong Republican but I'm not <laughs> going to ever write Donald Trump's name down on my ballot. I think a lot of them would, and certainly all of the DeSantis people would vote for Trump. I think a lot of Nikki Haley would as well. If you're yeah. showing up to a Republican caucus, you in five degree weather, you will vote for Trump. No, yeah. that's there's a lot of Democrats who are switching their uh, registry in Iowa to vote against Donald Trump. And then that's going to translate to the general because they're going to be like, how many, how many tried to get Yeah. Do you have evidence I didn't see, of that? I didn't, let me, sh- I, I saw it, a headline. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people out there that were saying that on election night, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen any documented evidence of it. Uh, was, more one demo- person, wait. one person went on Fox news and said like, we're seeing this more and more, but that's what I'm seeing. But the thing is, with that, you have people who are going to vote in these primaries who don't want Trump and trying to get a second option to Biden. And then they're going to be like, OK, Trump's in. We're going for Biden. I think I think if Trump runs, the more I'm seeing, the more I'm convinced if Trump runs against Biden, I think he's probably going to win. A lot oh, can I happen. Think it'd be it's going to be it's going to be closer than I thought uh, originally, I think. You know, you know, when I thought, you know, what I think is the nail in the coffin, the whole genocide Joe thing that's going along right now. Oh yeah. yeah, this is Billy's World War Three of the week. So Billy has been saying that that's we're gonna, different. We're actually, enter into World War, World War Three um, for like anything that happens. 
He's like, oh, started World War Three. <laughs> no, no, no. III. That that thing I put on the list actually, I, I'm trying to talk people down from World War Three. If you didn't see it, I think it was over the weekend or was it Monday too or last week? They're like uh, the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, was bombing Yemen. Everyone thinks it has to do with sponsoring, uh, uh, like Israel's um, national policy, but it actually has to do with defending free trade in the Red Sea. Yeah, it, it well, it has a lot to do with Saudi Arabia too. Yeah, but, Saudi Arabia has been carrying on a, a bombing campaign against Yemen for years and years and years, right? Doing some pretty fucked up stuff, and so we back Saudi Arabia up, and now we're stepping in. But that's in. that strike had nothing to do. It had to do with the exact cell that was attacking and boarding of uh, various different tankers off the coast of Yemen that weren't uh, bringing you know, weapons to Israel, as was claimed, there's like a vast majority of international ships, Russian, Norwegian, from various different ports across the world, that that is what the US and UK went after. It had nothing to do with the conflict. It did, in in a in a abstract way, it did have to do with the conflict uh, with Israel and everything in Iran, but it had more to do with they were attacking international ships that were nowhere involved in the conflict. Yes, the, the Houthis. I yeah, probably the Houthi pirates. Houthis, the Houthi pirates. The the Houthis have been uh they've been getting bombed by Yemen for or excuse me, getting bombed by Saudi Arabia for a long ass time. And so uh yeah, the the pirates that that boarded that it was it a tanker. That was a wild video. They like put it all they did it for the gram. They like boarded it with GoPros and videotaped the entire process of it. Did we get did that ship get taken back? Uh with the, well a couple of Navy, two Navy SEALs, uh, I think, passed away or, or lost at sea because they were on a mission taking back ships. Yeah, but did that ship that got taken over? What, I, I never. There's been several that. ships. That's that's why the bombings happened. There's been several ships in the Red Sea. So yeah, World War Three is starting. No, uh, that has purpley. that. Um, that ha means it's not. It, this has nothing to do with a larger conflict. That has to do with uh red the red sea attacks like there's greek vessels there's uh you know chinese vessels there's mm -hmm. everyone's on board with like hey you know the red sea is crucial between trade in, of europe uh africa and asia like we need you know clear waters adam smith the importance of a safe merchant what, the what's invisible that hand wait wait so uh so Iran does back the Houthi rebels, right? They they back uh that faction of Yemenis. And so it it does put us more in conflict with Iran straight up, but um yeah, I mean Billy Billy's probably right in that the reason why we did it was because they're they're fucking with the ships. Adam but we're Smith's also backing up Saudi Arabia. And we've been we, backing up Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk about with that. But the whole genocide Joe movement is you're going to see a lot of the, you know, the left is split on the conflict in Israel, right? And you have half of them being like Joe Biden supporting Israel's involvement in Gaza. And they're like, he's genocide Joe. Then you have the other half being like, Joe, how could you let Israel get attacked on October 6th? And so you, he's screwed on both fronts, and that's like a big issue for like. I don't. I don't see that many people bl blaming Joe Biden for the terrorist attacks. You, the, the there are in certain avenues, like it, it's political football, but like with the money given to Iran, that was supposed to be only for certain things. I don't think that's, they get. They didn't give money to Iran though. They get they unfreeze two billion dollars that they had frozen of Iranians' money. That's right, but, that's what some people think. So you have two sides who are like, mm -hmm. it's his fault for sponsoring Israel, and then it's his fault this is even happening. So I'm not it's sure. Unfair. I've ever it's seen, political football. It's political I've never, football. I've never seen, and I could be wrong, but I've never seen like moderate Democrats that support Israel that blame Joe Biden. Because Israel got attacked, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that criticism. Like the the I, criticism oh. has to do with pause with their relations with Iran, which have changed subsequently. Sure, but, but I, I haven't seen that link to you're the reason October seventh happened. 
I haven't, it, I haven't seen it's that. It's the jump, but they think that the like you is know, it your can, jump or their jump? Because I, I haven't seen. I've that spoken plan. to people about this, especially gotcha. in in like the moderate anti-Trump community. I'm talking like people at your bars, local bars. I'm talking about like actual political, like strategists or like you know, like like things that are like actually relevant to the conversation. Not no disrespect. I've just been in general. No, like, I, I understand. Like a relevant, like, like a relevant point to what you're saying is yes, the left is split between. More people that lean more left are saying Joe is aiding in a genocide. Um, that would be like the leftists. That's why I said moderates. Right. Moderates right. more are in support of Israel. Um, and but I just haven't seen that critique from them. You know what I'm saying? They're more like, yeah. yes, yes, keep bypassing congressional support for Israel aid. Yes, keep going. And the left, then the leftists are saying, no, bro, you're bugging. Right. Just send Kendall Jenner over there with a Pepsi. Yeah. Take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Should be his foreign policy plan. Uh, but I do think he's going to lose, unless, unless something like big happens and there's a big change, uh, which it certainly could. There's a lot of times. Keep saying, I keep saying that. I think his Trump card, no pun intended, is going to be eliminating uh, student debt. I think like somewhere in the next. He's tried though. No, he's done it. He's done it a little bit, but I'm talking about completely wiping it out. But didn't was I was it the Supreme Court or who like put a stop to because they were trying to do much more, and then it ended up being like he could do it with an executive order. He could do it with the the Supreme Court got involved because that he tried to do more than ended up happening, and they were it it got somebody put a stop to it. I think it was the Senate, but I think I could be wrong about that. But um, he can he can do it with an executive order. He can. I think he could. That's, that's could, been his critique because he ran on that and he hasn't done it. He's going to legalize weed. That's what Joe he, should do. He, was supposed, he ran on that as well. Yeah, he should do it. That, that's probably going to be his big thing. I'm going to call it right now. Joe he, Biden. he has to do something to appease like the left. And I mean the left. I don't mean the ones that are in support of Israel. I mean like the leftists, like mm. progressives. He's like a uh, wing of the party. He He's given pardons right to people that were federally charged with uh marijuana possession yeah mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so i think that i think next step is joe just says all right smoke them if you got them but do, would be a highly favorable. but won't people kind of like see through that of like a almost like a get rich quick like uh like bit i don't know Welcome like I'm politics, just doing this baby. to get reelected. Yeah, yeah. I what mean, Mad do? Dog. That's what people have been doing that with gas prices for a long time. It's like <laughs> oh, they, gas prices know. get jacked up in in off election cycle years, and then mysteriously they drop. So that's okay, see, I, 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 never, I have a bold prediction, PFT. In the next six to eight months, there's going to be a caravan of migrants. Yeah, that's coming to the border. Yeah, it's a bold. It's a bold prediction. I don't don't. It's already here. I feel. There, I feel like probably around, probably around, probably <laughs> around September. Is. Okay. I mean, the, it's already here. There are schools in Brooklyn that have to go remote because there are migrants being housed in the schools and the kids who live I'm talking, in I'm the about, district. I'm talking about at the border. I didn't say that we didn't have immigrants that are undocumented living in America. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're going to hear about a big caravan coming in the next six six months. The, yeah. The caravans. The caravans a steady like. It's coming and it's here and it's still coming. You're not understand what I'm saying, Billy. I know, I know, I know, but you're gonna hear it in the news. But that's also crazy that there are schools in Brooklyn that are housing migrants instead of like letting kids go to physical school. I don't. I don't know. I would have to look into that claim. That that's a real claim. That I'm is not, true. That is. True. Not, I would have to look into like, that. Like, is like that is screwed up in th- that like. And, but you know. I think he'll cancel all federally owned student loans. I don't think he can go after the private ones because I think that he gets can't into like do that anyway. Seizing property. Yeah, type that levels. was ne- that was never on the table. Yeah, yeah. You he can't be like, hey, you don't owe Bank of America anymore. <laughs> yeah. But he could be like, you don't own you don't owe Fannie and Freddie Mac. I hate those names, by the way. They don't do student loans. They only do housing. They are you sure? I'm pretty I think sure. It's just the Department check of it. Education. Yeah, I thought that they did. I thought they did student too. All right. Well, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I I do know that Joe Biden can federally legalize um, marijuana. Do y'all still think it's going to be him running? Yeah. But yeah. 
I'm I'm more Go to convinced of that than I was several months ago. I still just I can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, look at Billy's hat. He's already got the merch printed up. They already have their. I think it's their their slogan is "Finish the job" or some stupid shit. I mean, I'm sure he has a campaign, but like, I just I I still think something weird could happen. Yeah, well, I mean, something very natural could happen too. No, but I think uh, hey, FBI, they're speaking not. They're not going to do anything. No, no, that's not even what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm just it sounded wild from the outside. Big T, do right you there. have plans on assassinating Joe Biden? Shut up. That's <laughs> fucking so stupid. All right, Lib. Um, no, I'm not even going to finish the thought now because you're <laughs> some so of us are undercover. <laughs> you ruin my, you ruin my thought. Yep, you've ruined the episode. <laughs> this is now dumb. I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> No, I mean, there's there's a good chance that he might pass away. He's old. That's uh, one. That's not even what I was saying. Two. Uh, now I'm in a bad mood. Fuck you. <laughs> Three. Don't put that in the episode. <laughs> I I never implied that you were. Keep it in we, the episode. It's we fine. were. Uh, well, I was just cleaning it up because Arian was. He was putting a disclaimer and nah, saying, "Eat shit, pal." We're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about that. But yeah, I think he's gonna run. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be Biden. He's already Trump. running. He's already he's already starting to do. I think he went to some like black church or some shit, didn't he? Yeah, he's already starting. It's it's, it's all, like I think I even think the DNC is like doing what they did to Bernie, uh, and like you know actively. Um, who was it? Oh, who was I listening to? Uh, man, I forget what they're doing specifically. So I don't want to. I want to. Don't want to claim some that that might not be true but i think the dnc is participating as per usual they could they could run fetterman can you imagine if we had a president in like a hoodie and shorts all the time fetterman, that would rock fetterman, dude fetterman. he oh he's that uh the big dude from pennsylvania he was coley's favorite guy yeah 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 i wonder if it is now yeah, he would he be a good enforcer at international like meetings just have yeah. him stand behind whoever's like because i don't you know what i'm saying yeah, he's an intimidating looking guy. Yeah. Big dude. Uh yeah, it it's probably gonna be Biden. He's probably still gonna be around, and I think Trump's gonna beat him. RFK is probably not gonna get any votes. RFK did you see what RFK said the other day about MLK? This ties into last week's episode. They were talking they were talking about MLK um on MLK Day, and they asked RFK about, you know, uh Martin Luther King Jr.'s history with uh, RFK Jr.'s uncle, John F. Kennedy. And he's like, yeah, you know, um, the FBI, they did these wiretaps and this sort of blackmail thing, but they were probably justified in doing that because my uncle had to find out whether or not he was a communist and had to work with uh, the FBI to make sure that he was not a threat to America. So RFK is now, he's excusing FBI wiretaps and surveillance on citizens, which is like a very weird thing for him to endorse. Yeah. He's gotten weird lately. I think they got something on him. Did you see how he admitted he was on <laughs> Epstein's plane? Said so they got someone. <laughs> well, we, yeah, he's, uh, yes. He's been I mean, weird, dog. What he's always been about? a strange guy. You just liked him because he was, was agreeing with some of the things that no, you, were, you were liked him because no. he was anti-vax. Yes, you did. I like a lot of the work he's done like on what, the Hudson River. <laughs> he's done some great environmental policy on the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. And he, think, he he makes you ask questions and he literally was like, yeah, like, like who my, the fuck let him in? The CIA <laughs> killed my uncle and my I think he should have talked about like a lot of people think that the same people who went after his uncle and father went after uh MLK. I yeah. like I hate to be ableist, but I ain't no way I could have a president that talk like that, dog. There's no way. I could take any accent. I could take any, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, any, whatever. That shit is annoying. True. It's very surface level for me. I understand. I can get into his policy disagreements, but I can't listen to this motherfucker for over five minutes before I'm like, I can't, nah. I think he's better than Biden, though, from a speaking category, from conveying complex. Well, I think he's, I think he's more eloquent for sure, but the eloquence is wrapped up in a plastic bag of, Dog shit. His voice is whole. That that should be not. That's mean. That's mean. Because he can't help that. That's mean. But still, yeah. that's horrible to listen to. I take that back. Not also, really. he's jacked. What does that mean? 
which makes up for it. Like he's jacked. Have you seen RFK Jr.? He was at Muscle Beach. He was benching, and I was like, "That guy, he's he's jacked for how old he is." Like I like what the fuck? That's is it? that that could be a you gonna vote for Cuz because he has muscles. That's kind of it's, kinda it's sus, not man. no, but it's like like <laughs> sus, he's man. he's able. Like he's able body and he likes yeah. to lift. He like might put creatine in the water instead of fluoride. Like you know, you got to think about the big picture. What about the Rock? I'd vote. Yeah, fuck yeah, I'd vote for the Rock. Yeah, Billy, Billy elects presidents like Sparta used to elect their leaders. It's like who's the best warrior <laughs> <laughs> and statesman? Yeah, warrior poets. All right, well, it's going to be a very interesting, like, but what, we got 10 months mm -hmm. to Election Day? And we will be covering it. We're going to be covering it. Uh, stay tuned to this space for more. <laughs> I like telling people to, to stay Watch on this, this space. Watch this space. Yeah. Um, what else we got today? Uh, Jel Jason Kelsey possibly retiring from football, possibly not retiring from, from football. He's retiring. He was crying at the end of the game, and he was talking to his coach on the sideline. You could he You could see that he was thinking about retirement. This is probably his last game. And then apparently he told people in the locker room after the game, he was out. He's since walked that back a little bit. Right. And he was like, well, I don't want to, it was an emotional moment for me. I think he probably wants to retire maybe on his podcast, get those downloads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he's going to probably go into media and make a ton of money doing that. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I would like to see Jason Kelsey come back. I, I feel bad for him personally. Like I don't like the Eagles, but, uh, Kelsey seems like a good guy, easy to root for. And he was he was not happy the way things ended with Tampa Bay. Now the Eagles are probably going to fire Sirianni. I would imagine that they, that they will. If I were to bet on it, I would say they're going to fire him and that uh, the Cowboys are going to fire Mike McCarthy too. And as a Commanders fan, that makes me very upset because I would like nothing more than those two coaches to be in that division for the next 20 years. Uh, and also, as we're looking for our own head coach, it stinks that we've got now potentially two big-name already pretty good franchises that are also looking for a head coach that might be a little bit more attractive. So um, I'm bummed out about that. <laughs> Don't fire either one of those guys. Give them a shot to, to fix things. You know, no, he would never do it. What? Jason Kelsey would be a great piece for the New York Jets. As a because, center? Yeah, because we we need help on the offensive line. Uh, Spider had a really good theory. This this fits in nicely with conspiracies and shit. Uh, Spider here at Barstool HQ. He's been what is Spider's official title? He's like part chief vibes officer, like like <laughs> Arian's boy. That's on. He on should the be Texans. CEO. Spider, Spider for CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Looking, yeah. Chief vibes also kind of office manager sometimes. Right. He was I think originally hired as like an office manager type. Yeah. And yeah, now he's like a vibes guy. But everybody loves Spider, right? It, it, and he's he's always doing NASCAR something. correspondent. Yeah, NASCAR yeah, correspondent. Sure. He comes in sometimes. He'll just like walk up to somebody and be like, "How how big is Spider?" You'd say probably like five four. four. About as tall as you. About as tall as you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Spider Spider is a perfectly great sized human I think being. He's, he's like put on like weight five, recently. Four, 120. Yeah, no one forty five. Last time I spoke to him, he was 145. But, but he'll, he'll like walk in the office and go up to somebody and just be like, what's up, pussy? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, the, and the person that he says that to be like, yo, Spider, what's up, man? Good to see you. <laughs> it so says, like that, that's how loved he is. He can call anybody any name and they'll be like, that's, that's my guy, Spider. That's true. <laughs> spider being Spider. It yeah. says he throws a mean body shot too. Yeah. He's got hands. It yeah. says his title is Event Operations Coordinator. That's a great title. But then the department is content. Yeah. So yeah. it's like that makes sure. sense. So he uh he had an interesting theory about the Jets. He thinks that Aaron Rodgers has been talking too much shit about the vaccine. So Woody Johnson, uh, who is in the Johnson Johnson family, they're going they're sick of his shit. <laughs> they're gonna trade him or cut him and he's gonna go to the Cowboys and uh and win a Super Bowl. Oof. Uh it's fan fiction. It's all fan fiction. Well, no, I, I, the fan fiction was that in the meeting between Rogers and Woody Johnson, do you remember that infamous meeting that Woody Johnson just told him, yeah, the vaccine's just like, it's not supposed to hurt anybody. We're just trying to make money. And he just was like, okay, you gave me the truth. So I'll play for your team. Infamous. Yeah. We're, it's not going to work. It's not going to hurt anybody. We're just trying to make money. Yeah. Then he was like, I don't know about the other guys. Can you, like, imagine, okay. can you imagine if Woody Johnson 
if that was true, if like that's the truth about why they created the vaccine, if he was dumb enough to tell Aaron Rodgers that <laughs> to get him to play on his team, I think Woody Johnson's completely separated from any of the R and D and actual runnings of the Johnson Johnson company. You might I don't even be, think yeah. he's on the board. Is he on the board? He was also he was an ambassador to Ireland. I think yeah, that means Trump. he's boozing, dude. He he literally is like the ambassador to booze. That would be the best ambassadorship, I think. Well, maybe maybe some like island, maybe Antigua. That'd be nice too. But yeah, going to Ireland on a diplomatic, it's actually probably easier. You just go over there, like what what public relations or what uh what behind the scenes international relation strain do we ever have with the Irish? Well, the, the IRA was a problem. We we were giving them too many guns. That that could have been tricky. A long time ago, though. When was he? Let's see when he was. I think 2016. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, he, he's during the fun times. Yeah. The prosperous times. The golden era of Ireland. Ireland's <laughs> kind of having a moment right now. Yeah. Conor McGregor's not helping. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, he might he, end up being president of Ireland. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't Under your theory, he would. Where you, yeah, where you I choose think... The, the most fierce warrior to to represent your country. Yeah. Uh, anything he's else you want to down. get into? Have yeah. you seen him recently? Yeah, McGregor's returning to the ring, so he's returning to test a drug testing protocol. If you've seen McGregor like within like three months ago, he was like jacked the gills, dude's head's grown like what two hat that, sizes. Where does that come from? What is that? What does that mean? Jack to the gills? What does that mean? Well, I think it comes from wet to the gills which means like drunk but like jack to the gills which is just like pumped up let's let's look that up that's a good a, word a really strong fish <laughs> that's what they what did what did, what did bodybuilders have gills i don't understand this where it comes from to the greatest degree possible let's okay entirely or extremely to the gills um but where's the origin to the gills origin it's a good question uh, it comes from the phrase stuffed to the gills, which means so full you can't eat anymore. That seems to have come from the fact that when you stuff a fish for cooking, you fill it all the way to the gills. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Nice. Yeah, look at us learning of that. So we got anything else we want to get into before we discuss the dead internet theory? I have been attacking my New Year's goals. And I got back into piano lessons. Um, and I, I had my first one. And it's a dude who's like hilarious. He's very like, he's not into anything pop culture. You could tell he's just the type to sit in his house and like listen to classical music and like drink tea. That's the type of nigga this nigga is. And so. I go to his, I thought I was going to like a studio. I ended up going to his house, but it's like a dude who runs a studio and he divvies it out to people's houses, whatever. It ends up being like nine minutes from where I stay. Super cool cat. I walk in and uh, you kind of talk about like my goals, like what I want to do. He wants to teach me to read music, you know, and we started on a lesson and I told him like, you know, I kind of want to learn uh, how to build chord structure, you know, kind of on the spot by my own, be able to play live, you know, you know, seamlessly with people, stuff like that. Uh, he's, he's like, yeah, you know, we can get all that done. He's like, what kind of music do you do? And I was like, you know, I put out some hip hop projects. Uh, he's like, oh, okay. He's like, I've, I've never, I'm not really into it. He's like, I know it. I like how they sample. Like he'd be talking to me like that. Anyway, we go through the whole lesson. At the end, he was like, would you like me to play anything? I was like, yeah, man, let me let me see you get busy. So he's like, play, he pulls out a sheet music and he's like going in on some piece from the 1300s or some shit, um, going in. And he hits like two or three chords and he, I was like, oh, I went like, it was just beautiful, right? And he, he, just, he turns back and says, you can put that in a hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool moment, man. I'm excited to build with dude, but it was funny as hell. That's cool. So you're playing the piano. You, you used to play before, right? Well, I can play, right? So like, you know, I can play like if, you know, if I know the chords, I learn the chords. Yeah, I get it. I'm fine. But I want to be able to read music. One. Two, I want to be able to jam with a band. There's nothing better than jamming with a band and talking in the music language. Like, okay, what key we in? And mm -hmm. you're dancing and you're going and, you know, there's modulations and you're 
and you just talk and you know where they're about to go with it. Like that's that's what I want to do. That that shit is one of the goals of my life. So I I, I got to start from square one and, and understanding like theory in a in a real way. So it's gonna be a long journey. But he was like super, not to brag, but he was like, yo, you have talent, you know, for not really knowing anything. He's like, I think if you if you do this, you you can you can do this. If you apply yourself, I I have a small tip for you. Um, not you should pretend to be blind. Get some sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Helps with marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Blind Arian Foster. I'm missing a certain Genesee qua. <laughs> Blind Fino. Blind Fino. That and I started my new book. I'm reading a book a month. So I'm excited, man. It's, it's, it's a good year, man. It's starting out well. What are you reading? Uh I said I think it's called Except for Palestine, um, by uh Mark Lamont Hill. Mark Lamont Hill is like a he got fired for CNN for saying from the river to the sea, mm -hmm. uh, unjustly, by the way. But um, I think he's just a brilliant brother who's very knowledgeable about that subject in particular, but also like black history. Um, just a very knowledgeable brother that I, um, so he's the one like where I really started learning a lot of critical race theory from and kind of pointed me like what books to read about it and stuff. Cause like there was people saying, oh, they're teaching this in K through 12. And he was like, where, what, what curriculum? And he would like, he was like arguing with right wing pump uh, uh, right wing pundits about that specific issue, and that's like what he went to school for. And like he's just very in depth and, not, and knowledgeable about that. And so he kind of guided me along that uh, pathway. Cool dude, cool brother. Check him out if you if you're into uh, leftist commentary with a spin of black. Mark him on here, good dude. All right, uh, Big T, you got ten C minute for us or teed off? Uh, I do have a teed off Tennessee minute. I don't I Arian, I tried to get you to tune in for the second half last night. Dalton Connect, our favorite white basketball player. <laughs> Love that guy. He went for 39 last night after going for 36 on Ooh, Saturday. He no, might be that dude. He's unreal. He's my favorite player I've ever seen. Um, I'm mad we only get him for a year. But um Yeah, he's out of here after this. He was the first SEC player to score 35 in back to back games since uh, I shouldn't have said that because now I don't remember, but it was a long time. Where's he going to be drafted? <laughs> um, I've seen like right outside the lottery in projections just because he's old. Mm -hmm. But in terms of talent, I mean, Wait, how old is he? 23. And it's pretty old. Because he went from? to he... junior college, then Northern Colorado, then UT. Mm, That's journey. pretty old for, for a top NBA pick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, NBA, especially more than other sports, they draft based on potential rather than... But you can watch him and tell, like, there really hasn't been a player at Tennessee under Rick Barnes that... Like, you could tell Grant Williams was an awesome college basketball player, but there were some questions like, how would that translate to the NBA? And he's had a very nice career in the NBA. But when you watch Dalton Connect, you're like, that guy is an NBA player. Yeah. Like, just everything he does on the court, how he moves, how he scores all three levels, like, he's elite and he's gonna play in the nba for a long time how's his defense not good okay which is why he went to tennessee he said he wanted rick barnes to teach him how to be a better defender i haven't seen it yet but it also doesn't matter yeah you can score 39 points in a college like game. he's actually noticeably really bad on defense but it, i mean it does not matter at all yeah um well it matters a little bit but like the rest of the team is so good at defense, it's fine. Yeah. Like uh, I, they knew that when they took him. They're like, we're gonna sacrifice some on defense so we can get thirty-five. Yeah. Um, teed off. So the weather in Chicago has obviously been frigid. The thing I did not account for. Um. So right outside the entrance to my building, there's a little dog park. Mm -hmm. Um. And so obviously, dogs there all the time. What you don't notice when it's not below zero however is all the dog piss because now it's frozen on the sidewalks and i mean it's dodging it's like playing mario you got a <laughs> dodged up dick dive and dodge did i say dick dodge <laughs> duck, dip dive and dodge you gotta dodge up dick dive and dodge yeah, yeah, all the do way through this yeah, stuff dodge dog dick yeah yes <laughs> and so uh i meant to take pictures this morning and i forgot but i mean it's everywhere it's yeah. just sipping all on, over sipping on yellow ice <laughs> yeah it's terrible um so now it, every time i go home i'm angered but so uh it's it, that's bad i don't like that but in, in new york in the winter time um or just all the time in new york dogs piss on sidewalks because there's not a lot of grass right you'd have to specifically walk your dog to a park have it pee and then come back 
most dogs, they don't know like, oh, I have to wait till I get to a certain spot to pee. They get outside. They just start pissing. There's just dog piss all over the sidewalks in New York all the time. I used to carry a thermos with me with uh, with water in it. So that when Leroy would pee, because when he peed, it was like a fucking, it was like he spilled a giant bowl of pho down there. So I, I used to have to just pho. like, pho, sorry. I, w- I would pour the water to wash away the piss. I'd say 90% of dog owners don't do that. I just did because his piss was so big. Um, but there's these like tiny little puddles of yellow everywhere you go in New York. It's disgusting. And here here in the wintertime, yeah, the, the dog piss does stand out in the snow quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. But does, at least it doesn't smell because it's frozen. Yeah, I never noticed it, you know, being bad before, but dude, whatever. And the Sami people in Finland, they look for those uh, yellow spots in the snow because it's reindeer piss and they eat it and they trip on it. Hmm? So that's one culture that loves yellow snow. I think it's get the high on reindeer piss. Yeah, when they eat these certain Siberian mushrooms. Billy, if if I can find you reindeer piss, would you drink it? If if it was the hallucinogen well, I'm actually already drinking piss. What is that? It's like a health kick. Like so you're supposed to drink your own piss. So How I'm is like it doing t- it for the new year. What does it taste like? It's salty. I think it's got all like the electrolytes when you're trying to restore. Did it take you a while to get used to it? Yeah, I put it in the fridge to get it cold first. I've heard that it makes it lose some of the nutritional properties if you refrigerate it. I heard it does break down some of the chemicals, but, you know, it's better cold. Do you find that when you drink a certain type of liquid, it makes your piss t- taste better? Uh, B12 vitamins makes it more fluorescent green. And okay. then uh, just asparagus, it gives it too bitter of a taste. Okay. Well, keep us updated. Let us know what, what health benefits you see from drinking your own piss. Will do. All right. Well, hold uh, on. I, I had to take a, a thing real quick. You're not really drinking your own piss, are you? You haven't heard about this? You're not. It's not. Y'all are fucking, Come on. You're not falling for that. You're not drinking your own piss. What else could this be? That's fucking orange Gatorade, bro. It's probably got some creatine in it. Some shit. Anyway, we'll move on. You're not look, drinking your own look, piss. Look at how it foams. That's not pee. Apple that, juice. That does foam like piss. That, that's not pee, bro. Dude, I think I Billy's put... drinking his own piss. There's no way he's doing that right now. That not taste good. Apparently, it's great for your teeth, too. It's not have you thing. looked totally. up benefits of drinking piss? Not only have I not looked it up, I will never look that up. Uh, let's just let's just make a, a video clip of this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... All right. Teed off about anything? You're kidding. You oh, yeah, the dog piss. About, tell them about how you mad about Tell them about how you mad about the dogs pissing in Chicago. That'll be a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I Sorry, I thought that you just done Tennessee Minute and not the no, 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 no. You had a mental lapse, brother. I did have big time. It's okay, man. <laughs> big time. It's okay. Um, no, but we, I did think that he had done getting old. the Tennessee hey, look at Minute. Me. Look at me. It's okay, man. We're getting old. Know. We are it's getting okay. old. Almost yeah. 40. All right, so dead internet theory. You it. guys want to get into it? Knock it out. This is your baby. I, when I found out about the dead internet theory, it was actually a very, uh, uh, you know, current topic to us. And actually, I found out about it through Tennessee football Twitter. Okay. Go yeah. On. So back in uh, December 9th, twenty twenty two, I found out that there was a bunch of accounts posting. Uh, anti Stetson Bennett uh, propaganda and all the tweets were exact imitations. And uh, the, the exact tweets was Stetson Bennett isn't even the best player on his own team. Maybe not even close. Hendon Hooker transformed our entire team and program. He is our best, most important player. What do they base the vote off of? This was anti Stetson Bennett Heisman propaganda and pro Hendon Hooker propaganda. So then I began to research it. There was hundreds, maybe even thousands tweets that had this exact same wording posted all across Twitter. And it was like, where the hell is this coming from? A bot army. It might have all been Big T. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, so I just searched for this tweet. I count uh, eight 
of the tweet you're talking about. Well, that's just the eight they kept in the video. No, these are on Twitter. If you search those words, there are eight tweets with the the verbiage you just listed out. Well, also Twitter's done the bot bots, purges. Yeah, they've been wiping the bots recently. That okay. was well, maybe Elon's that could big be thing. part of it. But so. yes, yeah, so, so um, so what Billy's talking about is bots. We've seen bots in a lot of places. There was that that famous thing with the the Washington football team at the time um, when there were hundreds of people just tweeting out. Dan Snyder is doing the right thing. It's great to see an owner that cares about his team and taking all the right steps in the right direction. Whatever the, the actual verbiage was, it was all identical. And somebody had paid for a bot farm, essentially, to do that. So you've been able to pay for bot farms to, like, spam Twitter with, with messages like those before. Um, the dead internet theory goes a little bit further than that. And uh, some people think that it goes back to 2016 or 2017 um, when the internet died. And uh, some people also think that this was just started up by 4chan as like a big hoax because the uh, they, they point to things like how uh, comedy in general and content across the board has lost all of its soul in the last like seven, eight years online. And uh, the one exception to this rule is with the anime, which has actually gotten better because the storylines are created by real human beings and written with care. And so that that to me seems like it's. 4chan like throwing in like a little bit of a joke about it uh but i do think that they're on to the right track with a lot of things so so real quick yeah as a small caveat everybody that watches anime says this though that anime has the best storylines mm -hmm. I've, I've attempted to watch anime and it was an unsuccessful attempt so if, that, if it's y'all or if anybody out there, if you have like an anime suggestion of like which one to get into that's, you know, easily digestible so that I may try to, you know, because I'm interested because there's so many people that like it. So it's like, it's got to be something to it because of storylines and I love shit with storylines. So there's anybody out there or here that can throw me a ball, like start with this. I'm open. There's I'm open. people who say the exact same things about porn as their excuse to why they're watching porn. They watch for the storylines. I think that's like a joke of the same way. Oh, I mean, it's no, but like if people that actually watch anime say that, though, I, I understand your reference, though. Huh. So um, we've all come across bots, right? We've all seen obvious bot activity online, uh, especially the bots have gotten out of control recently where you can tweet anything out and you'll get 10 blue check marks that reply to you. And they're all like porn bots. They're all like girls that are promoting their OnlyFans. But they're not like actual people replying to the tweets because the replies come too quickly after you post. And so you'll see like just stacks and stacks of people that reply to every viral post. And if you click on their profile, it's a link to their OnlyFans, that sort of thing. But they've also gotten better about how they reply where, where they can take the text of what you tweet out and understanding the words that you use the automated reply that will come back will seem like it's written by a human being and will seem like it's relevant to the conversation, but it happens too quick quickly for it to be an actual person on there. So um, this theory is that in 2016, 2017, um, that was like the tipping point for the internet as where it became um, more bot controlled than person controlled. So uh, it's been estimated that anywhere between 20 and 50% of all internet traffic is done by bots and not by real human beings clicking on links. So what, what that could mean is like, uh, there's some bots out there that do good work that are uh, like web crawlers that go to websites, search the text and then index those for use in search engines, which is a um, like a useful bot that would do something like that. Then there are malicious bots out there that are created to either uh, do like a DDoS attack to overload a website with too much traffic or for other purposes. But um, yeah, it's been estimated up to 50%. It's probably more along the lines of like 30 to 40%, but a very, very large amount of all internet traffic is done not by human beings, but by bot yeah. technology. Yeah, Billy? This report from 2022, and it's probably changed since then, says that 47.4% of all internet traffic was bots. Uh, which was a 5.1% increase from the previous year. And it then showed that the lowest 
uh, amount of human traffic at 52.6% uh, was the lowest it's been since it's been recorded. Yeah, so there's a lot of money to be made in bots. I don't exactly understand how, but um, there's a lot of money to be made for fostering engagement that isn't real. So uh, there was a, a tweet that came out uh, January 6, 2024. The Twitter account History and Memes posted a video of a foreign newscast to make a point about the Kazakh language. The account added the caption, the Kazakhstan language sounds like a diesel engine trying to start in winter. One problem, the video has no sound. The video has been viewed more than 33 million times and been liked more than 24,000 times in two weeks that it's been up. And a lot of that engagement was already in place but before the post became the subject of controversy as users began replying to it and adding community notes that it lacks sound. Uh, so, History and Memes has 3.9 million followers. But it's crazy that that account on that tweet got 33 million views and 24,000 likes on a video that does not actually do what the caption says that it does. So looking into that, I looked into that. So that people think that one of the reasons why it got so much interaction was it's either a Russian bot farm, Russian propaganda or Chinese propaganda that's trying to, you know, destroy a lot of local languages so that more people in like Kazakhstan, I think it's probably more Russian, will speak Russian because they think of it like to to speak badly about the local dialect so that Russian and Russian ideals language becomes more propagated and like like exactly like we said, like it's a an active subversion of Kazakhi language in yeah. order to promote russian in the in the region because like that central uh central asian area former soviet but also because they're not under russian control anymore they're trying to use soft power approaches to promote to keep russian in the region yeah that that actually makes sense because russia does have these bot farms that they've they've been using for years and years and years but uh to like actively denigrate one of their rivals in the region. Yeah. All you have to do is tweet something bad about the Kazakhstan language. Like Billy, you should start tweeting more about how like shitty Ukraine is and how weak their military is and just watch the engagement roll in. Also the, the fostering the evil, the foster the direct fostering of um, Twitter or X Elon Musk paying money for strictly engagement, I think is a bad thing. And it's going to just make this problem worse and worse and worse because you'll see people that, their jobs, yeah, their, their jobs are straight straight up to like ride the algorithm and just post whatever the algorithm is favoring at any given moment. So if they know that there's, if you could post whatever you wanted about Ukraine and you'll get a shitload of engagement, most of it might not be real. It might be from, from bot farms and not real human beings, but you're directly incentivized <laughs> to like lean into all those algorithms and, and try to foster all that interaction from bots. Because at the end of the day, it's more likes, it's more retweets, it's more replies to your tweet. So um, I feel like it's it's been directly fostered by Elon, who's he's pretty much given up on the bot thing because he said the only way uh, to get rid of the bot problem that Twitter has, which they've always had a bot problem, but it's gotten way worse recently. Um, it, he said that the only way to combat that is to make you have to pay for Twitter blue. And so if you pay for Twitter blue, then that means that it's a, it's a real human being tied to that account. Well, the bots figure that out pretty fucking quickly. Like go, go look at the replies to any Elon tweet and see just how many of those are real people. Cause they're not, they're not real at all. Is it, are the bots as people, right? Cause they have to program those algorithms into said, said, uh, you know, user base in order to react like they do. Correct. No, like you can create you can create a bot that will reply multiple bots. No, what I'm saying is that yeah, it's still but it's still people creating the shit for whatever their nefarious reasons are. Yeah, but one person can create a thousand bots. Yeah, okay, I got you. So if you I'm tr I'm scrolling back to I, I got three right now. So they usually are under hidden tweets. So a lot of people who comment on their mind are gambling related or only fans related. So yeah. Marshall got a Nicole, lot of gambling, Jones. 
Yeah, Nicole Hart, Unraveling Ursa's Unseen Universe. And it's a woman, 18, yeah. It's it's porn bot. And then another one's Flipperick, three, four, five, six. Over 100K won yesterday. People in my Telegram channel keep winning with me every day. Don't miss the next game. Click the link. Then Julio Daily Tips. I deal with correct scores and big odds. Join link in my bio for more winning tips. Yeah, free Telegram link. 100% yeah. guaranteed match fix Telegram link. Get that shit a lot. That's crazy, though, because there might actually be like fixed matches overseas that might be guaranteed winners. From from the bots, yeah, and th they'll let you know. But like after finding out what I did about a lot of like these small time games in like various different countries, like they're very well, well might be fixed. Yeah, so um, proponents of the dead internet theory have advanced various theories for why this might be ranging from corporations using fake accounts to manipulate algorithms in order to drive consumers and the market to their ends to states using a dead internet to freely control public perception. Other people take it a step further and view the dead internet as a goal of the establishment to make ordinary people distrust their own understanding of reality in the world, the veracity of the facts that they read and call them to question the authenticity of their online interactions. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty much people are saying that, in the early days of the internet from uh, 1997 until about 2016, it was a lot more authentic of a place where there were different creative uh, points of view that were being put out there organically. And then since then um, the, the algorithms have become too powerful and they now control uh, what the, what the trending topic is. Like, have you ever seen something that trends where you're like, why the fuck is this trending? It makes zero sense to me. And it seems like it's a, it's um, something that was forced on you by somebody that like runs a marketing department. You know, so, really do this shit all, all the time and be them K-pop fans. Yeah. That but might be real though. That's a large group of people though. I, like that I makes know, sense. But there's also bots that do that shit as well. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, a lot of people say that Ice Spice is a, a direct product of this. Which really? is an industry plant, yeah. For streams? For streams, for um, her popularity in general. I, like she was I disagree. The, <laughs> I, I disagree. I think there's a lot of mainstream affinity to Ice Spice. You think so? Not well, necessarily. Now, now there music. is. I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying right now. There's no question about it. Right now she's super fucking popular and selling a lot of, or not selling records, but selling a lot of tickets. Um, get a lot of streams that are 100% for real, but people ask like, where did she come from? Why did she just one day show up and she's super popular? Honestly, I I thought the same about uh, uh, Richmond North of Richmond guy. Yeah. Um, but I think that was actually both of them. I think are naturally viral. One from dudes being like, "Yo, Ice Spice is thick in the group chat. Check out this video of this music video." And it's spreading that way. And then people realize that like the, the verse was actually decent. And then it went viral that way. And then, you know, with the Richmond North of Richmond, you just had the whole right wing internet apparatus just being like, yo, this guy is singing a song that promotes our viewpoints and like spamming it out mm -hmm. like main accounts. Yeah. I think industry plant is a t term that's used very mm, lackadaisically. And like virality is what plays into most of it now. Like Ice Spice has a verse that goes viral and then it's just like, okay, now you're in the spotlight. That um the interviewer, the podcast interviewer who was doing stuff with rappers that was oh, going viral. Yeah, Bobby Alt. Yeah. That might like I do think stuff because like one did like was she recruited? Did they have like uh like auditions? for her role and then like push her podcast through like some label or like w who controls that podcast her i think because when she she was on bffs yeah. and i think she kind of just said like it's all me like i'm doing all of this by myself she also said that she is go like was not making any money from it yet like she was basically using all of her savings 
But on. where was she getting the booking agents to just like you don't, don't find? Yeah, that is a good so, question. I don't know. Yeah, like because I don't think she's like wasn't her first one Drake? No, it was this other funny. Yeah, Marco? I don't know the booking part of it, but you know it's crazy how that kind of stuff like it it, it just takes one. I was um uh, what was I? I was talking to like I think it was. I don't remember it was it was it was a record company or a streaming service, um, and they were talking about how like they strategically try to create viral moments and like they have like ways to, to attempt to do it. And granted, it doesn't always work, but like for their artists, it is a mm -hmm. it's a it's a thing people try to create. You try to create viral moments because like, right. it's yeah. like the new. I guess the, was there any ever kind of thing like that growing up? I don't remember if there was or not. But, yeah, like now young artists will be like their labels will tell them like make a TikTok song. Mm, and yeah. a part of um like influencers will make money on this is that like a record label will come to them and say, you know, we'll pay you whatever, ten thousand dollars to use XYZ's song in mm -hmm. a TikTok. Like yeah. so you can or make a dance to it. So then it kind of catches which is very like subliminal, but like Hey, can you use Tate McRae's new song in a dance? And mm -hmm. then that kind of catches fire and then goes from there. So it's like they have different ways of having it go viral rather than just like, because like the radio doesn't really mean anything anymore. What's crazy is if you think about, you know, for every viral challenge that you see, for every like dance song that you see, there's millions that don't make it. You know what I mean? That you never hear about. Mm -hmm. I would like to see some of these, like a compilation of shit that didn't go viral. That yeah. should be well, fun to. <laughs> that should be fun to watch. There, there's a. I love our, that because like there's so many there's millions of dollars that have been pumped into viral marketing campaigns that have fallen completely on their faces, <laughs> and then you get a dude stacking up milk crates in a park and trying to walk across yeah. it, and everyone's like, "Fuck yeah, that's <laughs> awesome!" Like, so it's. Sometimes the dumbest shit possible is actually the funniest. And it's, yeah. it, that's that's what like gives me hope sometimes is at the end of the day, like you could have a million Russian people locked chained up to a computer in Siberia trying to crack the algorithm and they would never come up with Frank the Tank. Or yeah. how many people watch Jerry try to hit a fake yeah. hole in one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For three days. Whoa, 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 brother. Real hole in one. Yeah, that, that the fake well, was unnecessary. Not on it, it was just unnecessary. Fake felt like I don't a, disagree. Like a, it was no. just unnecessary. Pebble Beach. I, I don't disagree. Yeah, y'all are y'all are reading way too much into things today. Y'all are trying to create problems. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know, know, know if that was a shot at Jerry. And that's why y'all are doing exactly what you're talking about right now. It's kind of an inception moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you got a problem with Jerry or not. You know, what I do saying? not. But I love Jerry. Jerry I know, is. We all do, which is why I acknowledge his hole in one without the slide. I was I was only trying to convey that it was on a golf simulator. That's it's like, not like he was out on like a golf you ever, course. You ever see like, you know, say you're talking to a girl, you like, see you talking to your little friend or whatever. I love Jerry. I see, Jerry I see is you starting ultra, your little business or whatever. Yeah. Jerry is on the right side of history in a lot of aspects. You know who I think is about to go viral and I just want to be on record calling it because okay. <laughs> Wayne Jetski, our coworker, because his new song is actually fire. Mm -hmm. Are you how, much did, to... how much did he pay you how much did he pay you yeah it, yeah <laughs> this is how they do it like I, it pops up in mind because he's my friend and like i won't realize who it is at first because i don't see his face and then i'll hear the song I'm like oh this is a good song like this and then i'm like oh shit it's jet ski mm -hmm. yeah and so i'm calling it he's gonna pop off and i already texted him I was like yo dude you're gonna pop off like one of these days with these tiktoks because this is how this stuff works and he's gonna like become like it's gonna make him you know old town road like Lil Nas X, like that was a classic viral sensation song that he's now got a whole career off of. Uh, it's, it's tough to compare it to like one of the highest selling songs of all time. It might be the most streamed song ever, I right? I think it may be the, like one of the highest selling songs of all time. This it, is, it, 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 was, it was new segment. Watch this space with Billy. Let's, <laughs> let's not let's not let's not put the bar Billy that predicts high, right? viral moments before they're viral yeah I, I listen i would love it i would love it if if wayne jetski blew up like that so i'm not i'm not trying to put him down at all i'm just saying you remember we talked about under promising and over delivering okay i'm sorry that might be that might be a bit of an over promise to say that it's gonna be the most streamed song of all time but i'm not okay. saying but i'm just saying like you that's how that happened. happened 
Yeah, like for example, Two C Slide was Drake's attempt to be TikTok to get a TikTok song, and right. it failed miserably. Um, also, Old Town Road okay. not not a most streamed song of all time, but number five most streamed in 2019. Oh, that, what? Yeah. No, yeah. He, so I, I think what about what about I was saying because I guess up there were like one of the most. What's the, I mean? What are the most stream songs of all time? So the like, most stream songs okay. of all time. Uh, never this gonna is give through you all up. platform. No. Gangnam Style. No, okay. <laughs> guess no, guess number one. And think you're thinking streaming, not most like streaming. sold of all time. Streaming, yeah. streaming. So something popular. My guess would have been Gangnam Style. I'm gonna no. say it's a Drake song. It's like it's no, not a Drake song. Hell no. Damn. Taylor. No. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with like a K-pop song. No. Uh, all Butter. I want for Christmas. No. Oh. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Oh. Oh. What? oh. That's, yeah. Wait, which oh, one is that? Ooh, I said, ooh, I'm blinded, I'm blinded by, by, by the light. Oh. What's the second one? <laughs> the second what? one I, is understand. Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Because uh, wow. that's got the Spanish. Oh, no. No, it doesn't. I'm in love with the shape of you. Okay, I've heard Just of it. Uh, number three is Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi. What? That's crazy. How's that's that go? insane. Um, I was getting kind of used to being someone you loved. And oh, no, yeah. Please. I don't know why I'm singing. Spot activity. Yeah. I haven't heard yeah. fucking three of the top four songs. What the fuck? Sunflower the by Post Malone is number oh. four. That's a cool this list song. sucks. Yeah, so this number five, wild. to round out the top five, Dance Monkey. Oh, that I've makes never sense. Heard of that. Dance Monkey, Dance, dance Monkey, Monkey, Dance Monkey. Dance Monkey. Dance Monkey. Okay. <laughs> I haven't heard Dance Monkey either. Oh, Holy yes, shit. I have. What? I didn't know that it said monkey. We're gonna have. I thought it was dance for me. No, dance monkey. It does sound like that. Yeah. <laughs> people are Harry uh, Styles number seven. People are gonna look back and be like, "What was the most? What was the best music that society came up with from this time frame?" And they're gonna pull up those five songs and be like, "Had sh some shitty taste." Sucked. That's yeah. why. Like, I, I have you ever released anything? I, maybe you, I, have you ever released anything, PFT? Uh, like on streaming? Yeah. 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 So this is why, like, I always like tell artists, like, like. Cause I have a, I don't want to put this in there, but I have a, a ownership in, in Mass Appeal, like that. So I tell artists like, um, like you can't get caught up in like what people feel about your music because like even like we're just named the top five stream songs of all time, right? And like we're like eh about it, but what makes music popular is like finding the most people that agree that this is good, right? And that is one very hard to do, but just like unrealistic with how emotional music is. And so like find your like tribe, find your little subset of people that enjoy what you do. So like like that pop sensation shit is like pop music, pop artists, they try to make pop music that's most appealing. They use the same four chords. PNT knows how they use the same four to you know, six chords. Every single song is like that, but they don't really try to tap into what you know they feel. And so it's like, I, think I never put much like weight into how people feel about my music because it's not like, it's just not for you. Like I made it for me. You know what I mean? Right. Like Pablo Picasso, when he was painting, <laughs> he was not trying to come up with shit that everybody would like to look right, at. Right. Exactly. Right. Otherwise he would have painted like sunsets. He was doing weird fucked up stuff that nobody had thought of before. And it tapped into emotions that people hadn't felt by looking at that art. And mm -hmm. when you have when you're incentivized by the internet to tap into whatever's popular or trending or what the main algorithm is, then you end up creating the same bland shit over and over and over again. That doesn't have that, that like spirit of creativity in it, which I think is what people really long to connect with is like something that they've maybe felt deep down inside for a long time, but have never seen or heard expressed. And you can't do that if you're just strictly trying to appeal to bots that have been programmed to only support uh, like things that have already been created, which is why AI art sucks. Like it's 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 sometimes the pictures are fun to look at, but it's not art, and it, it never will be art. And so people that are like really into the AI movement that are trying to advocate for it being art, it's like it. You don't call it art. You can be like it's it's a useful tool if you want to pull something up, but it's also drawing on directly stealing from people that have spent time and hours creating things in the past that you're just harvesting and then turning out your thing for. I agree a thousand percent. Did you guys, did you guys ever hear of Sugar Ray? Yeah. The Getting back band? to that idea of like guys who made music 
and oh. it, it wasn't mainstream, but then it caught on somewhere because it the band Sugar Ray. No, not Sugar Ray, Sugar Man. Oh no, Sugar Man, Sugar Man, Sugar Man, Sugar, Sugar Man, Man, Sugar Man. That sounds it, so. Um, is, should search for Sugar Man. It's about a guy who was making music in the '60s or '70s, I want to say, and then somehow one of his records got to South Africa. And he became a huge star in South Africa, oh, but yes. no one knew him. who he was. I know him. Yes. Yeah, I've heard about that guy. Oh, He's... that reminds me. I wanted to talk about this on the pod. Have you ever heard of... Uh... Oh, shit. Hold on. Talk about something else. I got to... Okay. To Billy's point, though, it's interesting you brought up Sugar Ray because Sugar Ray, they're the band that sang I Just Want to Fly. You know that song? Yeah. I Just Want to fly. fly. That song, uh, Mark McGrath their lead singer also a cousin i think first cousin to bradley yeah, yeah. Knoll, the lead singer of sublime but um sugar ray was kind of like a a rock metal band almost like a new metal ish i don't know what they would call themselves but they were like a, a fucking hardcore band and that album that came out that had fly on it they wrote that song which is completely different from their genre of music that they normally play um and it became a smash hit and they're like well fuck now we're just going to play like pop songs and they became wildly successful doing that. They're like a little microcosm of like tasting, tasting that success from mass appeal and then just steering their creative process into it. And they came up with some good songs, but it wasn't like that's not what they love to do. But you are incentivized to do, obviously, like what has mass appeal, especially once you get one little taste of fame. I, I would have loved to see people go to Sugar Ray concerts back in like 1997 that heard Fly and then been like what the fuck is the rest of this stuff that they're playing would have blown their minds <laughs> guess the spotify streams for the song fly ooh um 1.4 500, 500 million 500 million 142 142 million yeah, yeah that's, that's also good. their second most popular song do you know what their most popular is every morning that's correct Shut 211 door, don't say a word who who is the people that did a parody of like pop music and then it went so uh, Weird Al. No, it wasn't like exactly a parody. It was people just making fun of music. Uh, from, am I right? Was it the Beastie Boys being like, mm -mm. the Beastie Boys doing that uh, party fight for your right to party, and they're like making fun of like that type of music, and they went, it did successful. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like a little tongue in cheek. Yeah. Was that? I've never really listened to the Beastie Boys. I might, might be right, but I thought they were just. I don't you know, know who I listened to recently? Uh, that hold I on, never... real quick, because I got it now. I was watching this thing. I don't know if you've heard of them, BRT. It's a, uh, it's an album by Captain Beefheart and his Magic Band, and it's called Trout Mask Replica. Now I saw a like a bit of like a little like a video essay documentary type style on this album. Now, this album is not for, like, people who like pop music. This album, the time signatures are insane. Like, you, I think you'd appreciate it, 50, because you play. Yeah. So, like, the time signatures are so abnormal. Everything about it is so abnormal. The lyrics, time signatures. Like, you can't even bop to it because the time signatures are so off. Yeah. They're not, I mean, they're, they're so off that they're on. It's like jazz in every way, but it's rock, right? Um, it came out in, let's see, when did this come out? In, I think, 1969. And when it came out, they were just making shit that they loved to make, that they wanted to push the bounds of who they were as artists. Woo, woo. But, like, retro, in retrospect, it it's, like, regarded as, like, one of the most brilliant albums of all time. To, like, to critics, mm -hmm. you know, it's all, a, it's all a, a subjective thing. But like, so I listened to it and it's like almost like a train wreck because it's so bad that you can't stop listening that it almost feels good. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very weird. It's a very weird thing. You can't find it on no streaming, well, not my streaming platform, but you can find it the whole album on YouTube. I'll put it in a group if y'all want to give it. You guys, I, I guarantee big teams like, what the fuck is this, right? But just give it a go and just kind of like see the musical freedom that they have. It's it's a fun listen if you if you just like to put it on and just like dive in. It's really dope. It's the type of music that would never be successful yes. in the moment, like no. as popular music. And it was it would never yeah. be a hit. Yep. But then enough people listen to it after the fact and realize what they were doing, and it's so far outside the bounds of of what you normally hear that you, you can't help but kind of be attracted to it.
Yep, yep. And like Trout a human mask replica. It. Uh, it's it's just it's just awkwardly dope, man. It's really dope. So I, I want to read some stuff here about the dead internet theory. Um, there was a post that was made on the forum Agora Road. It was the Macintosh Cafe. That's what they call it. Uh, this guy says the time. He kind of lays out the timeline. He talks about how all cu- culture is cookie cutter. And he cites a bunch of happenings that would be incomprehensible to people that haven't been longtime users of 4chan before providing a timeline of how the powers that be brought this about. So he says, um, here's a timeline as best I can see it. In 2004, DARPA's LifeLog project was canceled. Facebook came into being soon after. 2004 to 2012, the NSA picked up DARPA's project under the Total Informational Awareness Project. So now the NSA owns DARPA's project. 2012, the Smith-Munt Modernization Act gives the U.S. government full legal authority to use propaganda against its own populace, undoing rules put into place after Operation Mockingbird's discovery and the Church Committee. 2012 to 2016, shit tons of DARPA NSA contracts are given to Google, Facebook, Amazon. 2016, leaked memos dating back to 2016 of Google's Selfish Ledger project. 2016, Google released a bunch of neural linguist machine learning programs. 2017, deep fake leaks start to become released. 2018, confirmed that for decades now, Reddit, YouTube, etc., vote and view counts are fake and completely manipulated. Um, so that's this guy trying to tie the U.S. government into uh, the dead internet theory that the government took over the internet. But I don't know. I don't. I don't buy like that level of. Um, like government interference with it. I just, I just think that people are they. You get trained to follow what the algorithms are telling you to do, and so subliminally, people will change their behavior online um, as the as they're rewarded for making certain types of posts, creating certain types of thing. Um, people change their online behavior to whatever incentivizes you the most. And I do know that like AI technology and bot technology right now. Uh, is light years ahead of where it was even like five, 10 years ago. And so major corporations know this and they have people that work for them that understand how to manipulate the algorithm, how to understand how to manipulate the internet that use fake accounts to make their products sell more, make their, uh, their employees or the people that they're trying to promote, make them more popular. That stuff, it definitely happens. And I was shocked when I found out that it was like, up to 50% of internet traffic is uh, actually completely fake. So what the, yeah. like, I mean, how, how do they, how do they gauge that? Are they, are they talking social media interaction? Are they talking like website hits? Like what, what, what how do they gauge that? Yeah, both social media interaction and website hits in general. And so you can, you can look at it like a, a website as a microcosm of what we're talking about. Websites have changed so much over the years to the point where they all kind of feel the same. Um, they're, they've done studies on eye tracking and they know when you log on to a website, how many words you typically read. I think like the averages. They, Yo, like, that's insane. Yeah. The average, I think people read about 20% of the words on a website that they click on and the rest, they just scan through and you get, you, you get trained on how to use websites by visiting them over and over and over again where you learn where to look for important information. You can kind of get the vibe. Like you ever click on a website and you're like immediately, oh, this page doesn't have the info that I'm looking for. This doesn't feel right. And then you go back and you look for that thing somewhere else because we've been trained over the years on how to use websites and where to look for important information. And they've done that um, by leaning into what we naturally do when we go to a website. So they know we're going to read 20% of the words on it. They know that we like to have uh, important text centered on a website as opposed to left adjusted or right adjusted. And so every website kind of follows these best practices until every website looks the same. And there's a lot of money to be made in terms of tracking eye movement, tracking scan, and uh, and all that human behavior once you click on a website where people are just constantly updating and updating, up, updating and updating based on new findings that they've made uh, on how we interact with the websites that we're looking at. So if I'm a, if I'm an advertiser, right? I go to brand BFT and I'm like, you getting, you come to me and you say, we getting 500,000 hits 
on my website, uh, awkwardmustache.com, right? Every day, 500,000 hits. How am I as an advertiser, I guess, sorting out how much of those is 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 honest uh, traffic versus a bots that you created? You kind of have to know the vibe of uh, where the internet is at, at any given time. Like, here's a good example. So remember when Facebook told everybody pivot to vi video back in like 2016, they told all media publishers, like video is the future. People don't read articles anymore. They want video content. So like a bunch of big media companies said, we're going to lay off a lot of our writers. We're going to invest in video production because that's where the money's going to be made because they were so reliant on Facebook. So companies made these big investments, overhauled their newsrooms, overhauled their production side, basically to suck Mark Zuckerberg's dick and be like, okay, we want some of this Facebook advertising money that's coming in. And then within like a year, Facebook had to admit like, yeah, all these video views that we've been telling you, like we're telling the Washington Post that this video that they made about uh, like, I don't know, a, a weekend with Rand Paul in DC or whatever. Uh, it says that you got, a million views on that. It's actually more like 200,000 views because we counted everybody that looked at it as being a unique view. If it came up on your timeline, even if it was just like the top part of the video and you scrolled past it and you didn't even stop to watch a second of it, we were counting that as a view. Um, so they, they have to take a haircut on that and be like, okay, we're going to like reduce the number of views that we said that you got. And then the people that made the videos aren't getting as much money anymore. So it's all like, it's a game of cat and mouse. A really good example of it is actually podcasts. So um, in 2016, when I started doing part of my take, we used one service that tracked across the industry. It was like the standard. It would track your downloads and your listeners. And then eight months later, a year later, came out that that service was full of shit and it was tracking a bunch of stuff that weren't actual downloads and weren't actual listens. And so then the industry had to like, remove 20% of the number of downloads that you were getting. If you're going out to advertisers and saying every episode of part of my take gets a million views or a million listens, turns out that was probably more like 800,000 at the time. And uh, so every podcast across the board had to dial back. Talk that then, shit. then they switch over to a new tracking website or a new tracking service that everybody across the podcast industry uses to track your downloads. And then you go to advertisers and say, okay, well, as per this company's metrics, we're getting a million downloads a month or a million downloads per episode. And then about two years after that, that company's numbers were out of date. And so the number was actually 15, 20% less than that. So it happens every like two or three years. And it just happened like three weeks ago where the service that everybody across the industry was using uh, was not up to date with how they tracked their downloads. And so every podcast lost a large amount of listeners about a month ago. And so now they mm -hmm. go back to advertising and say, here are the real numbers now. It just happens where it's like a new service comes up, they figure out the way, best way to track it. And within a year or two, it's kind of obsolete because they don't account for uh, either certain user behaviors or for bot activity. And so that shit happens all the time. And it's about like staying one step ahead and making sure that you're ahead of the bots. But there's no company out there that is really incentivized to tell people the real numbers. In fact, like, if somebody told you you were getting a million downloads per episode um, and then they told you actually it's more like 200,000 if it was like mostly bot activity, you'd probably be pissed off at that service, right? So For companies sure. are like, they have, they have heavier incentives to tell you that you're doing better, but then that also results in advertising fraud where if you take knowingly fake numbers and go to advertisers and try is to- there any, Is there any regulations behind that? I, I there probably are there's probably applicable laws but it, since it's all evolving technology it's very hard to prove who's committing a crime and right. where the actual malice is and who's the criminal in that situation like so because it, it seems so service I mean it seems correct me if I'm wrong it seems very unstable for any yeah. industry right so in your summation what is the future of the the bot <laughs> the bot industry right because right now it's literally dis it is disrupting uh economies right it's so small subsets of economies and in the larger picture as well so if it's if it's this disruptive now what do you see the future of it being I, i'll tell you one thing that i 
I can see going on right now that at some point will become an issue. And it's something that's happened in front of our very eyes. Like we all saw this happen in real time. And that's uh, the way that X is counting views and all that shit. Mm -hmm. So um, before Elon took over, you didn't have the views thing. You would have like video views sometimes, but you wouldn't have like tweet views. It's the exact same thing that happened with Facebook, where Facebook was saying anybody that happened to scroll past this, that's going to count as a view. If you look on X or Twitter on a video, you can see like how many views the video has and then how many views the tweet itself has. So, um, Big T, can you pull up the NFL scripted? I was just looking for yeah, that. Yeah, pull up the yeah. NFL scripted thing because it, it's like hundreds of millions of views on there, right? Really? Um, but that counts everybody that happens to just go past it on their timeline. It doesn't mean that that many people have actually watched the video. Gotcha. There's another number that's probably more realistic and it's a holdover from the last Twitter where they would count video views based. I think somebody had to spend a certain number of seconds actually watching the video for it to count as a view. It's probably something stupid like five seconds or three seconds and that counts as a view. I think it's three. It's three seconds. Yeah. So it's stupid. That's not a real number either. But that's what the video views were. Now it's like if you just blow past it on the timeline, it counts as a view because Elon's trying to incentivize people to be like, oh shit, look, 2,000 people saw this tweet. It's got all these views. Uh, but it's not, those aren't real views at all. So the tweet has 298 million views. The video, I can't find the views for. Maybe on mobile, you'd be able to, yeah, to see that. Yeah, look. it could be because I'm on the computer. You know what else? But the regarding tweet, that's actually crazy, though. though 300 like, million. That's, that's kind of fire. Yeah, but that's it's happening right now where advertisers, I think advertisers know about that one, too, because they saw it happen in real time. Right. When you put the view counter on there that's wildly different from the video view counter. So, so ad dollars is a ad dollars is a gamble, right? For from their aspect, right? They're saying, you know, we kind of have to trust what's going on here, and even if it's not, you know, we're gonna allocate a certain amount of our marketing dollars towards this, right? Yeah. So do they have any fail safe options, or kind of like a you know an auditing system that would audit any kind of view count or listen or download count? Promo sure. codes. Yeah, promo codes is a good one. Because that, that means that somebody's buying something right. or actively taking a, a step to, to use a promo code. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can look at like live turnout for things based on what their numbers are for digital turnout for things. And you can kind of make an educated guess that way and be like. I mean, well, I, would that, sort of, I think it'd just be advantageous for advertisers or, you know, marketers in general to. Because if, if there's people attacking it from the bot side, right, saying how can we disrupt the the monster? There has to be people saying, okay, how can we reverse engineer the bot? Yes. This you know was, I was about to raise this. So remember when you're like, oh my God, I was just thinking of fishing rods. There's an ad for fishing rods on my timeline. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever thought of fishing rods. I think you're talking or, about Or like, you know, when you're thinking about something <laughs> and then you get an ad for it. Right. So like. I think you have to say it. I don't think they could read thoughts yet. They, that we've, I've had multiple occasions where I've just thought about something, but it may have been like. I viewed the Joe Rogan ice yeah. plunge video. They, they can't read your thoughts yet, bro. Right, right. But like, but you might not even think you're thinking about it, but like, it's almost like they're two steps ahead of your thoughts. And then you see an ad for something. Yeah. Like, I remember someone telling me that they were walking by someone who had a dress that they liked and they looked at the dress and they're like, oh, I'd, I'd like that dress. And then they got an ad for that exact same dress yeah, on their. Yeah. Just I, by thinking about it. I had I had said to somebody, like, I don't own any pairs of pants. And then for, like, three weeks, I was getting ads on my gram for pants. And I'm like, nigga, come on, fam. <laughs> so that's a bot in itself, right? Because it's an yeah. automated ad yeah. that's posted. I'm going to do a little right. experiment right now. Let's I've been really it. thinking about getting a fishing rod, but I don't know what a good starting fishing rod is going to be. You know, like, I've been I thinking I wanted a fishing rod as well, like a nice, like, fishing rod that fishes... And it's a rod. That yeah. A fishing rod. Nothing special. I'm not looking to go deep sea fishing or anything like that. But fishing is right. fun. And so, fly fishing? Yeah, maybe. Like this this springtime, this summertime, there are a lot of lakes around. I love I'm, fishing. Yeah, I'm in Texas. There's so many good like fishing spots. for. And if I have a fishing rod, like a big fishing rod, yeah, I could, I could 
possibly catch. What do they have? Trout in Texas? What, what's the fish here? I'm sure they have trout in Texas. Uh, they right. got walleye in the Great Lakes. Yeah. I'm just I'm curious if anybody has any recommendations for like a good, solid, well reviewed, big entry level fishing rod. You think yeah. Zebco might be a pretty good brand for you? I don't, I'm not familiar with Zebco. I've never heard of them. I would love to find out more about Zebco and okay. all the deals and offers that they have, as well as their deep, rich history in the angling community. Absolutely. I, yeah, I've never heard of Zepco either, but if they have good, you know, fishing rod reviews, uh, if, 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 there's anybody, if there's anybody out there who knows about fishing rods, I would love to partake. I would like to know more about them, if they have any sort of information that can teach me more about their company. I, I would be all ears. Also, I would like to know where they're located, what their phone number is, and any legal disclaimers that they might have, and contact <laughs> us information. Hooks, too. Hooks, yeah, fishing hooks. Want some hooks in yeah. line. Bait yeah. me up. Yeah. Yeah. Just try hooks. Anything about fishing. I just want to be, I just want to, the next three weeks, I just want to dedicate my life to understanding and learning about fishing because I don't know much about it. Fly fishing, you know, what else kind of fishing is there? I don't know if any of our, any of the listeners to the show right now, if they're real human beings, um, if you have questions about fishing rods, maybe just ask that out loud to us and maybe we'll hear it from you and then we can address any questions you have about your fishing rod upcoming purchases on yeah. next next week's episode? If you want to say it out loud, yeah. Because and screenshot we... anything fishing rod related and yeah. tag us in it. Yeah, yeah. you know, tag us in some fishing yeah. fishing posts, ads, or fishing. anything. Like where you can get them. If anything seems fishy, you know. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any deals? Any any special fishing deals out there? Where I can shop. No, but don't tag me in no fish shit. I don't go fuck it. <laughs> Wait, this just reminded me. You, you know what? That's what probably happened to that guy who jumped in the Bass Pro Shop uh, a pond. He was probably, you know, he was just so obsessed with fishing and he wanted to find out more <laughs> that he ended up deep getting fished out himself. I you know, heard Some nice what, worm bait. Dude, dude jumped in the Bass Pro Fish Shop. Oh yeah! Oh, you oh, did you see this? this? No. Oh, Arian. Oh, I, I need to. <laughs> oh, this was bait. this went double platinum on white Twitter, bro. <laughs> okay, so okay. don't tell okay. Arian. Don't spoil anything okay, about the I'm video. A... Okay, just um, type in Bass Pro Shop fishing. Yeah, just search oh. Bass Pro Shop. I actually think <laughs> this might be an example of what we're talking about. I think this might be some viral advertising for Bass Pro Shop. I'm I'm certain they got millions of dollars in free advertising. Millions of dollars in free advertising for this. I think that that guy, God bless him. You're muted, Arian. He he decided he was going to take one for the team. Like, think about it. What would go viral? <laughs> oh no! If there was if there was a guy that went swimming in one of our pools, <laughs> and he had some very interesting things about him, <laughs> and uh, everybody talked about it, that's viral fuel right there, right? And then they hire this poor guy who's like, give me $2 million and I'll do it. I got the, the vice president of marketing for Bass Pro Shops. Like I got just the man for the job. How much, how much would it take for Bass Pro Shops to pay you to do what he did? Uh, I don't, there's not a number. No. There's not a number. Arian, did you find it? He's squinting. So I think he might have. Yeah. It's hard, right, so it's hard to find. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I've been into a Bass Pro Shop one time, and it was like I had to go to the bathroom or something. So I'd never really been in one. That, what is the point of them having? I, I guess that's a big ass pool. Because it looks got, right? sick. Yeah. It's, right, it's right. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was because I seen he jumped in. I'm like, I didn't know they had pools like that shit. But so he jumps in, butt ass nigga, and then and then jumps out and hits his head, and that's that's the video. Yeah. There's yeah. also a follow up picture to it, and if you zoom in on things. He's lacking. Oh, you you got to account the cold water that they got to keep those fish in, mm -hmm. and uh, talk that little wee wee shit, Billy. Some some uh, drugs he may have been consuming may have caused some shrinkage. Talk that little wee wee shit. Some mm -hmm. George George Costanza yeah. type action. I I seen this shit on Twitter the other day where dudes was like, uh, they was talking about their size, and one of the dudes was like, uh, he's like he's like he had an opinion. 
He's like, man, shut up, man. He said, it'd be these little dick dudes that be talking the most shit. He's like, who got a little dick? He's like, I guarantee I got a bigger dick than you. He said, you know what? Send it to me to DM if you really about that shit. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, any dude that feel like they got a bigger dick than me. Matter of fact, he said, why these little dick dudes be talking to me? You don't get to talk to me unless you send me a picky dick and, it, and it's even close to mine. And then some dude replied, he said, he said check your DM, punk ass. <laughs> 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 Hey, that's a sigh up. You just out here trying to get dick pics, family. That's your boy. That's, that's how you get uh, 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 those guys were doing cyber kidnap, not cyber kidnappings, but they're like, uh, I'm not a girl. Gotcha. Send me money. That's the even easier one. I mean, it was sus. He was definitely soliciting. Aaron, look at it. look at the text I just sent. That's that's one of the pictures of the guy. Yeah. <laughs> not big yet, though. Yeah, damn, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, it's viral. The, the the vice president of Bass Pro Shops was like, "I know the guy with the smallest penis you've ever seen." That's got to be edited, and it's going to get so viral when he gets arrested. Yeah, no, I think that's. I think that's real. I think that's it. That's yeah. got that can't be real. Did yep. he come out with a statement? Bass Pro Shops. Yeah. <laughs> this Did man, they? this man does not represent the uh, demographic of our normal customers. <laughs> <laughs> we disavow his penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. Uh, so, in general, users on X have become increasingly bemoaning of the presence of bots and low-quality AI-generated content on the site. The presence of bots on Twitter was a discussion before Elon purchased the site, which is true. There were, they had a bot problem before Elon was there and uh, they were trying to figure out how much of their daily user base was composed of bots and Musk pushed back against it. He said, that's the reason why he didn't want to buy because he thought that the bot problem was too bad. Um, and Twitter said that less than 5% of its daily active users were bots. Uh, and he hired the company cyber to study how many bots were populating Twitter one study estimated 13.7% of Twitter users were bots and a second estimate was 11%. It still feels kind of low. Yeah. Um, people also said that uh, Twitter was, and especially the Russian bot farm issue was a main thing behind the uh, Russiagate collusion where uh, people would allege that Donald Trump was receiving support in the election from Russia based on bot farm activity and uh an astroturf numbers on social media you remember the actual genesis of the fake news issue like fake news trump did a great job of of taking the phrase fake news and putting it on like mainstream news now they're fake news but do you remember what the original fake news problem was Russia? The not Russia necessarily russia not, not no not russia the dossier no that was later. no i'm yeah, talking about like fake know. news used to mean something completely different from referring to like mainstream news articles that were negative in in their tone and coverage of oh, Donald Trump. Oh, was it is it like the 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 daily tell like those those papers that used to say like Bat Boy lives, Bill Clinton's a woman type stuff? Well that's kinda of, yeah, the tabloids back in the day, like National Enquirer. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, something like that. But this is back in twenty it really started in like as far as I know, the twenty tens. So like 2010 to 2016, there were websites that people would just create that had news articles on them that were completely made up, like about politicians, about celebrities, and they would advertise on real respectable websites. So at the bottom of, I don't know, if you go to like CNN.com, there would be a bunch of, you know, those ads that they show at the bottom, like the real like low rent ads that are on a website. Well, those ads would say things like, uh, like Hillary Clinton arrested in on vacation in the Bahamas or something like that. And then you would click on that and it would take you to a website that was just written by a guy in his house um, that was completely made up just for him to make money on those types of clicks. And so there was like actual people that would sit down and write fake news all the time and make money off that. That's what the original fake news was. So people were, there was a lot of stuff on there about uh, Obama, about, uh, like Obama being gay, Obama drug use, a lot of that shit. And that's what the original fake news thing was, where it was like people out there getting tricked and sharing these articles on the internet about like Obama getting busted in an undercover sex sting. No, and, my, and my people, grandma got got by the Obama is a Muslim one. Yeah. 
Yeah, there'd be articles about like Obama like going to mosque that week and yeah. uh, all sorts of shit like that. And that was the original that was fake probably not the original fake news, but people started to say like hey, fake news is becoming a real problem with misinformation, especially on Facebook where you would like share these links to articles that were just 100% made up. And then people started asking Trump about it, about the fake news, all the fake news going on. And then he took that and he was like, you're fake news and flipped it entirely to be like, OK, people that say anything wrong about me, that's the fake news. One oh, of his so like best the Obama of all birther time. stuff, that's where he kind of got it because he the, fell for like Obama and wasn't born in the U.S. birther stuff. That was also like, yeah, like chain forwarded emails. That sort of thing. But there were there were websites that were created and it wasn't just about Obama. It wasn't just about Democrats. It was, I think, more heavily weighted against Democrats. But um, it was just like economy about to collapse. Things that would scare you. That's what it was mostly about. It's like what can make you the angriest and what can scare the most people? And then they would put those at the bottom of real real websites and then people would go to it and be like, oh, shit, this is actually happening. Like people that were older or didn't have any literacy training uh, or media literacy training, I should say. Um, so, yeah, th there was a bunch of that shit going on at the time, and they were probably inflating their views on that, too. But just people that are, are trying to make the most money based on the algorithms that are out there, just based on Internet uh, behavior. Damn. Hmm. So uh, in terms of buying fake followers and views... Um, there's a thriving industry of companies that sell fake social media followers and views to those who want to boost the perception of their reach. People used to do that for their own personal Twitter accounts too. There would be accounts that had like hundreds of thousands of followers and you would do a Twitter audit on them and the Twitter audit, it would be like 20% real, 80% fake. So you could just buy, buy followers left and right. I that think was that was big... the key to Barstool's success was that they actually organically grew their followers uh readership like they couldn't fake bot traffic because you know they they just organically built the following that's why they became so successful that was a big thing though uh when i was in college doing the the viceroy program and they started the barstool best bar competition yeah where, oh, don't get me started. where every school had to let you submit it and schools were buying bots to vote for their thing and then like it caused a whole big issue i can't fathom caring about it that much but right some people did i, I cared when i did it did you care that much i didn't buy bots no i did it organically and made it to the final four. Oh, what what bar was it brick street shout out brick street love you yeah, there were some companies. I, I want to say Bleacher Report got caught because they bought a lot of Twitter followers. Um, there were a bunch of. It also used to be a thing, like in, on like, Instagram, people would buy like ten thousand followers, but then it's such a dead giveaway because they wouldn't buy likes. So you would have like twenty thousand followers on Instagram, or whatever, but you would still get like seventy two likes on a photo, and you're like, well, this doesn't. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta pay more for, for the likes. Yeah, like there has to be certain like levels of engagement that you reach in order for it not to be sketchy. So here's a good example of exactly what we're talking about here. I, I did a search for companies and people that have been caught buying Twitter followers, right? And it took me to a website that just lists a top 10 of very, very Googleable celebrities, like the most Googleable celebrities. So you've got... Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Barack Obama, Taylor Swift, Britney Spears, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, Diddy, Justin Timberlake, and Shakira. And it's a made-up article about how all of them got caught buying Twitter followers. And the website is called BoostLikes.com. That sells Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm fucking wrapped up in an inception of the dead internet right now. We're like, Jeez. and it's not, I, I think dead might be the wrong term for it. It's just, like, scammers. Alive. It's, I think it's, it's the live internet. But it's like scammers that are just trying to manipulate all of your online behavior. Well, th think about the Ro Rocco Basilisk, right? Am, am I pronouncing that right? Probably terribly. Like that AI might be manipulating humanity through the internet. Right. But what I'm saying is like this is a fake article from a website that sells fake followers about fake followers. 
Like that, everyone is incentivized just by how how can you get rich quick, making money online, and it it ends up resulting in a lot of dog shit content that gets put out there that's not real, that is just strictly bait to try to make themselves more money in ad revenue. It sucks. This is why I always say, man, our economy is a snake eating itself. Yeah. You know, speaking of that, I saw this video about how, like, you know how there's those companies, BlackRock, uh, State Street, they're large, uh, you know, investment banks that own all these companies. If you look at who owns those companies, they're all each other. So in the end, it's this one huge company that all owns each other that owns everything else. Mm -hmm. How do we have we not like implemented antitrust laws on that? Break them up. Like Br break them that, up, Bill. Like that might help redistribute, like get the equality back. Like Don't be going. saying that with that head on, brother. I know. I when that piss clip comes out. I think it's going to go viral on conservative Twitter because we're look at this Biden supporter drinking piss, thinking it's okay. I love that. I you're hope the, that does. You know it's green goes tea. Viral. It's green tea. It wasn't so, piss. It's okay. green tea. Let's so just New get that on record. And I'm not a Biden supporter. The, uh, the New York Times in 2018 did an article about uh, buying followers and things like that. And there was a company called Davumi. And uh, it made... Just over 1.2 million over three years, they sold 196 million YouTube views, and all the views remain today. So from 2014 to 2017, the orders were completed in weeks. The actor John Leguizamo has Davumi followers. So do Michael Dell, he's the computer guy. Ray Lewis, the football commentator. Kathy Ireland, the swimsuit model, and uh, many, many more. So what happens a lot is if you're like if you're Ray Lewis, I'm pretty sure this is what happened with Ray. So Ray probably, um, I'm going to guess, didn't log on to a website and buy himself a bunch of Twitter followers. He probably has a PR firm that he works with. And uh, a lot of former athletes, if they're like getting into media or something like that, they work with the PR team. And the PR team, part of their job is to boost your popularity online. They have relationships with companies like that that will manufacture engagement for you and make you feel like you have a bigger audience and Therefore, it makes you earn more money in endorsement deals. Your rates for appearing on uh, TV or any contract you get goes way, way up. So um, it's probably like the PR firms out there that have those relationships that will then boost the celebrities. But it's all, again, it's all like completely inorganic. Uh, in The Atlantic in 2021, they wrote uh, an examination of the dead internet theory. And they talked about some of the weird viral genres of Twitter posts that just go viral all the time with, without really making sense. So there were a bunch of tweets back, I want to say in 2000, I think it was around 2018, 2019, um, where people would say, I hate texting. And then they would follow that with some random flirty phrase. Not really compelling post. If you would just say like, I hate texting just come live with me or I hate texting. I just want to kiss you. But the accounts that would tweet those out would get 33,000 likes on them or 48,000 likes, which were massively disproportionate to how many followers they had. So just like more evidence of how many bots are out there um, with an innocuous phrase, just like I hate texting. Um, so there's, there's a fuckload of bots. Everyone's a bot. Everyone's a bot these days. Well, what well, do you like, think the purpose there... of those bots were? I don't know. I, it might be like you were saying, Billy, with the, the Kazakhstan thing where you happen to stumble into the algorithm where there's a bunch of box, bots that are being trained to boost a certain type of post based on key phrases. And maybe I hate texting was something that was involved in some, some company's ad campaign at the time. Oh. I don't know. But there, there's definitely some truth to the fact that like big corporations out there are manipulating uh engagement on social media for sure or you think it's like people trying to prevent texting relationships and trying to get people to meet up and like increase the birth rate that's deep that that would it's be government that would be really deep if that were the case like i hate texting procreate yeah what what if there was a law where it was just illegal to make a bot to like 
portray to develop some social, some sort of social media account that you did not actively control and post from like being an anonymous account. No, you can be an anonymous account, but you have to control it. There are good bots though. Yeah. Yeah. There are good bots. What's your favorite bot? Would it dong? <laughs> oh yeah. Would it dong is a good one. Yep. For those unaware, uh, that is a Twitter account that tracks every MLB home run and tells you in how many of the 30 parks it would have been a home run. Yeah. Based on how far it went. Like and if it's, yeah. if it's like a short right field home run in Yankee Stadium. And so when you get one that's like, this is the only place in the majors, this would have been a home run. It's either funny or if it happens against the Braves, like you get mad. Yeah. It's, it's is, a good account. Also, the fourth down bot is pretty good. Like, should you go for it? Or yeah. Not? With the percentages of win yeah. probability based on going for it. Yeah. They're good bots. Is that a bot though or someone doing it? No, it's a bot. Those are bots. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't see the utility in making it illegal. Or, like, I guess not the utility. I see the utility. I don't see the grounds for making it illegal. Uh, the grounds are that it sucks. <laughs> yeah, not not enough. A lot is, of shit sucks that it's, it's, it's legal. Is spam texting technically illegal? I think if you're trying to solicit stuff, it is. Like or, or spam. Active, actively scam. Like, actively scam. I, I don't uh, think spamming is illegal. Um... I know. I think that's a state issue, but I know, like, in order to harass somebody to to consider like you're harassing somebody with text messages, it has to be like egregious. We're talking like thousands a day or something like that in in Texas. I don't know what it is like at the federal level, but so I don't think spammy would like constitute illegal. Also, for a lot of those spamming, like obviously there is ways to get around it, but you can like block those numbers. Or a lot of them, you can like reply stop, and they'll just yeah. You can opt out. Yeah. Because uh, robo calling are... is bots, right? Yeah, that was supposed to be illegal too. Yeah. Remember they so made that illegal the, a while ago. What do they get? Do, are they getting people with this shit? Is old that what they people? people. It? It's like all old people that they're getting. Old people. My, my mom's Facebook gets hacked like once every uh, like month or two, where she'll post something on her timeline that's very clearly not her posting it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, if you're, if you're not like, if you didn't grow up in the internet, they're getting good too at spoofing emails. Well, did you see, you know, remember, do you guys have, have we allowed, have we been allowed to talk about this on content? We can cut it. If not about the Erica, get me credit, uh, get me gift cards thing. Yeah. yeah we, that's, we've that's talked a, people talked about that the day it happened. And that's also like, not just a barstool thing. That's like every company. So it turns out it happened yesterday. Yeah. And I got Erica a very unique down. one compared to everybody else. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This happened again yesterday? Yeah, a couple Here? people got it yesterday. Uh, I mean... I think like Dan Rappaport tweeted he Dan, got one. Yeah, I was going to say Dan Rappaport tweeted that he got one. Oh, but nobody did it. Oh, no, no, no. No. Just like the text but the text coming yeah. in. What did yours say, Billy? Got it. This is a text from Erica? This is, this is no, this is in a quotes. text like analogous. Hey, Billy, this is Vanessa from Logistics. We sent down a survey for Erica's last day to get everyone's order from Outback. We noticed you weren't on the email chain. Will you be coming in? If so, could you tell us your order? That might actually just be real. <laughs> yeah, that might be real. Billy. What? We don't did, have did they Logistics have or anyone saying Vanessa. In, there wasn't Outback to eat in the office. There also is no Vanessa that works at this company. I just looked. But you're, yeah. not, you're not in the office. What do you mean? I'm... I, you're at your house. You wouldn't know if there was. Well, right now I am, but like, yes. There, but this was all fake. I'm gonna just text somebody in the New York office see if there was outback. <laughs> I followed up with Caitlin. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and Caitlin, I was like, Caitlin, is this real? Because I was talking to her about uh, some logistic stuff, not actual <laughs> logistics like Vanessa, but <laughs> but like, what what did they have to gain from that? Billy, reply to the text and, and say. <laughs> Hey, sorry, I just saw this. Is it too late to get my order in? <laughs> no, because unfortunately, I, I should have texted before. I screwed myself and confirmed that it was me. No, Bill. And like by saying, all all good, like. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. You answered? Outbacks. And what did they say? No worries. Erica wants to know why you're not here. Yeah, it's yeah that's just like someone trying to like get stuff out of you and i was like this is weird <laughs> yeah like is this erica trying to like like see if i'm 
not coming. <laughs> like, well, no, it's Vanessa from Logistics. Yeah. That's what it is. Vanessa, if you're a real person, I'm sorry. Also <laughs> shocking to know when Marcel doesn't have a logistics team. Yeah. Uh, breaking news. Pascal Siakam is going to the Pacers. Who's that? Uh, he's on the Raptors, right? Not anymore. Did Not you anymore. see the thing that broke? I think it broke while we were in here that Jim Ursay was found in his house unresponsive over Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's tough. And but he's, I hope he's okay now. I mean, wait, like, did I mean was has he been seen since that? Like, was he at the Colts game like week eighteen or something? He's been, I yeah, I think he's been seen since then. But he's being treated for a respiratory issue right now. Uh, but yeah, it's that's tough. Ursay has. He's battled his demons for sure. He's got to save the whales before anything else. Yeah. This sounds like a smear campaign. For Jim Irsay? Like either he has a respiratory illness and people are trying to say it's something else or he that did happen and someone's leaking it to try to like get him to sell the team or something. No, so he had – so this is two separate instances. Over the Christmas break or whenever, allegedly he was found unresponsive. TMZ broke that today, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then he's been back and then just a couple of days ago, he was hospitalized with a respiratory issue. So two separate things. I hope he's all right. He's, he's had, he's had his fair share of run-ins with trouble. He said that he was clean and sober. I hope that he was, but, uh, you never know. Cause he had, never know. he had some, pa- he had some pain pill issues and that's a tough one to kick. Dude was a power lifter. He was. Yeah. So, like, he probably has zero cartilage between his bones. Yeah. Uh, anything else we want to get into with the dead internet? I kind of believe, like, I've had this feeling for the last, yeah, probably since, like, 2016, that there's an outsized amount of traffic that I deal with and people and, and websites that are trying to take advantage of you uh, at a much higher rate than before. And with bot technology and AI improving so much, I do feel like it's going to get worse. Aaron, to answer your question from earlier about like, where do I see this going in the future? I just think that each generation, much like us, like we're way better at figuring out scam shit than our parents were. Right. Right. I think the next generation is going to be better than we are because they grew up with it and they grew up with knowing what the warning signs are. Like it's going to happen to us. We're going to be 60 years old, 70 years old, like on our, on our computers or on our phones getting scammed left and right by people. No fucking way. Mm-hmm. Well, they're think, probably going to be I like it will. It happens to everybody. Be, there'll be legit oh, robots that. coming to your door that look like humans knocking and be like, "Hey, grandma, it's your son or grandson." Well, if, if that's what they're doing, then fuck it. You know, I'm scammed, bro. But even then, I'm gonna be like, "No, I ain't giving you no money, you little shit." Oh, well, people goodness. thought that exact same thing when people would call, and be like, "Hi, this is the police. Send bail money for your grandson." Please don't call for bail money. Well, yeah, but like that's what like a scam. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I don't think I can get got, man. I so, never been got by. Hold on, have y'all gotten got by a scam? Hmm. I've never been think. got by a scam. I don't think that I have. They're all so fo- like it's very predictable. Like they're very like, I've never seen a scam. But like, hmm. But you say that you say that now with someone who is like internet literate, but in forty to fifty years. You may not be literate in whatever technology that we have. Well, this is and what, then that's where you get got. Well, I guess this is this is my argument. Because I am internet savvy, that has become my world. Everything I do is operate <clears throat> most everything I do, excuse me, is operated on the internet. So it has been integrated with my life. Right. So unless I choose to opt out of logging on the internet every day, then I'll, I will always be in the loop of what is and what isn't, you know, current. But it could be, as... it could be something that we don't even know exists yet. Like it could be like the chip in your, the chip that we'll all get in our brains. I think Metaverse. the only way to get scammed is like, it has to be, I mean, obviously it had to be unbeknownst to me, but it has to be right. like covert. Like they have to like hack in, like I, I download a video game and that now they're using my credit card, like something like that where there's no way of me knowing, you know, like me actually falling for me writing a check to somebody or some shit. Like, this is not going to happen. Like, so I've actually, I've thought of this after the AI Hank came out that PFT created. 
um, you could use like there's ways to pretend you're calling from other phones. Yes. So I used to use it to like pretend I was at someone else's house. Like when I was younger to my parents, like there was like that prank dials thing that you could do. Um, it was free for two minutes. So if I could get off the phone in two minutes, I could secure my plan. Um, but you could use that technology, use the AI Hank that PFT's saying and like scam someone who like might not, might not know Hank that well, but like is distantly related to him. So like that would be a way that you could get got Arian. If like Hank called, you said, yeah, like, you know, something, something, if they knew no enough information. To, I'm not giving no money to Hank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But I don't, I, this, I, I guess I met when I was younger and I was in the league and I was doing like a lot of business deals. I met a guy that I ended up doing a, some business with and he's like worth like 600, like 800 million insane. Um, and uh, he taught me young. He taught me, he was like, I have a strict policy with my family. He was like, I don't, I don't give loans. I don't give money out. He's like, it just is what it is. He's like, if I, he's like, once you open those floodgates, they will always be there. Now, if I choose to buy something for somebody that I love, that's on me. But like, don't ask me for anything because I don't, I don't give it out. And it's not me being mean. It's just me setting a boundary because you will become a bank for people if you have any kind of wealth. You will become a bank for people where they feel like they could just get it for free. Like, if I didn't exist, how would you make this problem? How would you resolve this problem, right? Now, if I choose to do it by myself, you know, that's a different thing. But he taught me to set that boundary. So if Hank calls me and says he needs so-and-so, I'm like, I can't help you out, brother. Sorry. Sorry, Hank. Here's what it is. Call Big Cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? Uh, I like your shoes. Thank you. Rocking the feelers. I'm on my, my streak of just buying all the shoes that I wasn't allowed to get when I was a kid. Hey, man, you know what? I like that. You know, that's that's self-care and that's self-love right there, man. Yeah. What's your yeah. favorite prayer that you that you said? You know, I deserve these. Penny twos. Mm. Penny oh, twos yeah. are, are nice. Uh, I'm going to get like some Jason that. kids in a little bit. You know what I did? Um, I got myself a Christmas gift. Um, I bought, because uh, I'm not into shoes. Like, I don't like shoes. I don't really fuck with them. I mean, I like their utility, but like, I, I'm just not like a shoe head. Um, I got the Travis Scott's golf shoes. Oh, yeah, off StockX. It was like it was like eleven hundred dollars, dog. But it was it was my Christmas gift. But I'm not gonna wear them until I break eighty. So they sitting in my closet. And so when that's, I break eighty, I'm gonna put them bitches on. I'm gonna be. That's a new wild. trend in the fashion world. It's called delayed gratification. Where you give yourself a goal and then you have to hit the goal, then you get the reward. Not necessarily like a goal, but like people will buy a fancy fashion item or like a designer item and then they'll wait to open it. So like they'll wait six or seven months to open it. So they feel like they're not just buying this to like curve some sort of craving mm -hmm. like to buy it and like that instant, you know, dopamine rush. So girls will buy like designer items and then be like, I can't open this for six months. Or I'm sure they, some people have like goals attached to it like Arian, like, oh, I can't break, or I can't open this till I, you know, close this many sales or something. But that's a, that's a thing going around in the high end fashion world, I think on TikTok. Oh, look mm. at me being basic. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok, a lot of bots on TikTok too. Yeah. Well, yeah. and those are, those TikTok bots are all the ones like the sand cutting videos. And like the barstool clips that they seal or like the Shane Gillis clips they seal. And it'll be like the subway surfers clips or the sand cutting or the rug, the rug cleanings. Oh, they're just trying to get money. They're just ag like content aggregates. So I thought they just... were fans. Mm, I think most of the time they're bots. Mm. I'm, I'm sure some are like real, but a lot of the times they're just bots that are scraping internet videos and then putting the sand cutting next to it. I mean, you know who probably utilized bots the best to like advance their own like dealings is probably Andrew Tate. And yeah. a lot of them weren't even bots. A lot of them were like real people who were working for him on, in his like thing that just spammed the whole internet with his crazy quotes. Well, it, he was also um, big on like affiliate marketing, right? 
Yeah. Getting those affiliate links out, drop yeah. shipping links. Like people use a shitload of bots for that. Anytime you have an ability for somebody to, to make money online just by, you know, coding something good enough, people are going to do it where it's like, okay, this is a get rich quick way. And um, then you're going to use bots to get rich quick. And so there's really no way that you can, you can stop people from doing it. I just think that the big corporations out there are so far advanced in terms of the technology that they have, like the big cyber, the, the um, big Silicon Valley firms. Those are the ones that are manipulating things perfectly. If you have a relationship with somebody that's developed great bot technology, then whatever line of business you're in is going to have a massive advantage over everybody else by using fake traffic. So uh, in conclusion, I think that the dead internet theory is there's some very real parts of it. I don't know if I believe the DARPA shit that that one guy said, but um, it's, I think it's real and people out there are probably you've experienced it. You probably deal with it all the time. They've made the internet a worse place because it's more fake now. Do you now bring it full circle from the beginning of the podcast? Do you think AI is a boogaloo boy trying to separate and polarize the population on the internet so they argue and cause a civil war and the destruction of humankind so the robots can take over? Well, those guys actually show up, <laughs> like in person. Yeah, but just kind of create discourse on the web and like make us hate each other using bots to antagonize. It's it probably happened sometimes, yeah. Some we've discord. always hated each other. This has just brought us in closer proximity. It's always fought. We're always going to fight. Let me know if anybody's listening. Let me know who out there you think is a product of bot manipulation. Like what what celebrities or what uh, influencers that you follow or you've seen, can you not figure out how that many people like, you know? I probably phrase that in a really clumsy way. But what think, what people confuse you the most with their popularity? It'd be a lot of them like social media influencers, though. Mm -hmm. Like them gurus and shit like that. There'd be so many like real estate bots underneath their shits. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they can't be on this podcast. They can't be on this podcast. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> I mean, you say what you want. About... <laughs> I, the only reason I'm here is bots. <laughs> say what you want about about anybody on this show, but we are we're here because we are truly ourselves. <laughs> I just feel like feel like such a scumbag if you went out and you bought like fake followers. And we don't get me wrong, like I've got a I've got a shitload of fake followers for sure. If you look at the comments on Instagram or the comments under any post that I make on X, like yeah, there's a ton of spam down there. I don't know how to get rid of it, but I I didn't start it, but it sucks. I think if you have a big profile, then they find you and it's just like they're opportunistic bots, little leechy bots, you know what I mean? Did yeah. you DM me word blessed? If you need five thousand dollars ASAP, like yeah, that's their big one. I'll be like DMing them too every now and then just to see what happens. Do they nothing respond? Happens. No, nothing happens. Did Sometimes you, uh, they, they've responded to me on. before, where they they then send me like a link to a website and yeah, oh yeah, you write a whole song yeah, dance. A link or two. Yeah, I once cash apped one of those bots. Cash app me five dollars and I'll turn it into seventy dollars just to see what would happen. <laughs> what happened? They just kept asking me for more money. <laughs> they kept the five dollars but you know i've bet five dollars on worse things that's true mm -hmm. you have like uh, i was hoping that they're, they would like send me like a little bit of money to be like okay now if you send me more i can do the exact same thing yeah but no then i was gonna rob them so <laughs> all right but well that yeah. does it for for the dead internet theory and this week's macro dosing we're alive. We're alive. We're all live. You're all out there. If you listen to this, you're live. And um, also, if anybody knows where I can find a uh, fishing rod, that would be awesome. So, oh, I want a fishing rod so bad. Do you want to do voicemails or no? Oh, let's save those. Okay. Let's save those. Maybe we can do those on Monday. Okay. Sure. Slash Tuesday when the episode drops. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.